Coming Home to Pine Haven by Laura Abbott. Chapter One. Sophia Matthews sat at her desk, her fingers dancing across the keyboard as she typed up a report. Her long, curly brown hair was pulled back in a messy bun held in place with a ballpoint pen, and her deep green eyes were filled with determination. The office buzzed around her, but Sophia was lost in her work, the dim glow of her computer screen casting an ethereal light on her face. Late nights, weekends spent strategizing and countless meetings had become her norm. She had invested her heart and soul into her work, believing that hard work and dedication were the keys to success. She had dreams of rising to the top, becoming the creative genius that everyone admired and respected. Hey, great job on landing the Bennett account, Sophia, called out her coworker, Mark, as he passed by her cubicle. Thanks, Mark, Sophia responded offering him a quick smile before diving back into her work. It was well after 6 p.m., and many of her colleagues had already left for the day. But Sophia, ever the ambitious marketing executive, was still hard at work. The clock on the wall may have been inching closer to seven, but that didn't bother her. Sophia thrived on the late nights and extra projects. It was what fueled her meteoric rise within the company. As she finished up the last few lines of her report, her boss, Mr. Johnson, appeared beside her desk, his arms crossed over his chest. Ms. Matthews, do you ever go home? He asked, a hint of amusement in his voice. Only when I absolutely have to, sir, she replied, adding a touch of playful sarcasm. Mr. Johnson chuckled. Well, I just wanted to say how impressed I am with your dedication to your job, Sophia. You have been an invaluable asset to this team since the day you walked through those doors. Thank you, Mr. Johnson, Sophia said, feeling a swell of pride in her chest. Her hard work was paying off, and she knew it. She'd built a life for herself in this concrete jungle, and her career was everything she'd always dreamed it would be. Stability, success, and the respect of her peers. She had it all. Keep up the good work, and I foresee a great career ahead of you, Mr. Johnson continued giving her a sad smile before turning to leave. Sophia allowed herself a small sigh of relief as she saved her document and shut down her computer for the evening. She knew that her job was demanding, but it was also incredibly rewarding. And it was all worth it when she thought about the life she was building for herself and her fiancé, Michael. As she gathered her belongings, preparing to finally head home, Sophia's heart swelled with contentment. Life was good and she was exactly where she wanted to be. Little did she know that everything was about to change. The following morning, Sophia strolled into the office with a confident stride. She clutched her coffee in one hand and her planner in the other, mentally preparing for the day ahead. A whirlwind of meetings, project updates, and brainstorming sessions. Her heart soared as she recalled the praise she'd received from Mr. Johnson, all those late nights and extra projects were beginning to pay off. Morning, Janine, she called out to the receptionist, her voice filled with warmth and excitement. Janine's face broke into a wide smile. Morning, Sophia. You look positively radiant today. Big plans after work? Janine teased, her eyes twinkling with mischief. Nothing special, just dinner with Michael. Her cheeks flushed at the mention of her fiancé. But first, I need to conquer this day. Go get him, Tiger, Janine encouraged, giving Sophia a playful wink. She settled into her desk, ready to tackle her to-do list with gusto. But before she could even open her laptop, Mr. Johnson appeared at her cubicle, his brow furrowed and lips pressed into a thin line, a stark contrast to his cheerful demeanor just the night before. Ah, Sophia, may I have a word with you in my office, please? He asked, his voice uncharacteristically solemn. Of course, Mr. Johnson, Sophia replied, her stomach nodding with unease. She followed him into his office and sat down in the chair opposite his desk, her hands gripping her planner tightly. Listen, Sophia, Mr. Johnson began, his gaze steady but filled with regret. I don't know how to say this, so I'll be blunt. Due to unforeseen budget cuts, we have to let you go. I'm so sorry. Sophia's heart stuttered and her face paled. Her grip on the planner tightened until her knuckles turned white. I'm sorry. What? I don't understand. 
she stammered, struggling to process his words. Because based on our conversation last night, believe me, Sophia, this decision was not easy, and it's certainly not a reflection of your performance here, Mr. Johnson explained, his voice heavy with remorse. You're an incredible asset to the team, but unfortunately, we just can't afford to keep you on any longer. The final say came from higher up. Are you sure there's no mistake? Sophia asked, desperation creeping into her voice. Can't we find another solution? I'll take a pay cut if that's what it takes. Mr. Johnson shook his head sadly. I wish there were another way, but the decision has been made. We have to make some tough choices to keep this company afloat, and this is one of them. Sophia stared at him, her eyes wide and glassy with shock. She felt as though the ground had crumbled beneath her, leaving her free-falling into a void of uncertainty. This couldn't be happening. Not now, not after all her hard work and dedication. Thank you for everything, Sophia, Mr. Johnson said softly, his expression filled with sympathy. Good luck with your future endeavors. As she exited his office, her mind raced with a torrent of unanswered questions and fears. How would she break the news to Michael? What would she do now? One thing was clear. Sophia's life had taken an unexpected turn, and she had no choice but to face the unknown head-on. She stumbled out of the office in a daze, clutching a box of her belongings. Her whole world had been pulled out from under her, the future she had so carefully built shattered into a million tiny pieces. How was she going to pay rent? Her bills? For the first time, a kernel of fear took root in her chest. She had always been able to rely on herself. But now... She made it to the subway before the tears came in earnest. People stared as she sank onto a bench, struggling to breathe through her sobs. She had given everything to that job, sacrificed her social life, her hobbies, her friendships, all for the company. And for what? To be tossed aside without a second thought. A familiar wave of doubt and self-loathing rose inside her. She brushed angrily at her tears, hating how weak she felt in that moment but at least she still had Michael. He would know what to do. He probably had a whole list full of business connections he could put her in touch with. The train arrived with a screech, but Sophia couldn't bring herself to stand. She sat alone on the platform, the ache in her chest nearly unbearable, wondering how she had managed to fail so completely at the one thing that had always defined her. Sophia pushed open the door to her shared apartment with Michael a little earlier than usual. The weight of her job loss pressed down on her shoulders like a leaden cloak, but she was determined to turn things around. With Michael's help, she felt confident they would find a new job for her in no time. Michael? She called out, her voice echoing through the empty living room. Are you home? Silence answered her, and for a moment, she thought he might still be at work. However, as she walked further into the apartment, she heard faint laughter coming from their bedroom. Her heart beat against her ribcage, fueled by both hope and fear. She wanted Michael to share in her determination, but the laughter made her uneasy. Michael? She repeated, her voice cracking slightly as she approached the bedroom door. The laughter stopped abruptly, replaced by an urgent shushing sound. Sophia hesitated for a split second before pushing the door open her emerald eyes widening in shock at the scene that unfolded before her. Her heart pounded in her chest, the sound reverberating in her ears as she stared at the tangled sheets and the two people who had just shattered her world. Her breath hitched, the air feeling like cold steel against her lungs. You're home early, Michael shouted, stating the obvious. But Sophia couldn't even make eye contact with him. She had tunnel vision focused only on the body next to him. As if sensing her eyes on them, her best friend Jessica sat up, a smirk playing on her lips. Surprised to see me, Sophia? She drawled, not even bothering to cover herself with a sheet. How could you? Sophia choked out, her voice barely audible. Come on, darling, Jessica said, flicking her blonde hair over her shoulder. You really didn't see this coming? All those late nights at the office make for an awfully lonely man back at home. 
Sophia's hands clenched into fists at her sides, the anger beginning to bubble beneath the surface. She looked from Jessica to Michael, who remained silent, unable to meet her eyes. Michael, she said, her voice trembling but firm. I can't even begin to comprehend how you could do this to us, but what I do know is that it's over. Wait, Sophia, he protested weakly, finally looking at her. Please, let's talk about this. Talk? She scoffed, her deep green eyes blazing with hurt and fury. What is there to talk about? You've made your choice, Michael, and now I'm making mine. She glanced at Jessica, her gaze icy. And as for you, I hope you're happy with the leftovers because that's all you'll ever be. Without waiting for a response, Sophia turned on her heel and marched out of the bedroom, her head held high despite the stinging tears that threatened to spill over. As she closed the door behind her, she knew that she was also closing the door on a chapter of her life that had brought both joy and pain. It was time to move forward, to find happiness on her own terms, even if it meant starting from scratch. Sitting in the driver's seat of her car, she could do nothing but stare at the windows of the empty living room in the apartment she had once shared with Michael, feeling as if the world was closing in around her. The framed photos that used to adorn the walls were now shattered memories on the floor, remnants of a love that was never meant to last. She took a deep breath and dialed her younger sister's number. Hey, Sophia, what's up? Lily's cheerful voice greeted her from the other end. Hi, Lil. Sophia replied, trying to sound casual but failing miserably. I, I need to talk to you. Of course. What's going on? Concern tinged Lily's voice as she picked up on her sister's distress. Can I come stay with you for a while? She asked in a small voice, swallowing her pride and embarrassment. Of course. You know you're always welcome here. What happened? Michael. He cheated on me, with Jessica. Her voice cracked at the confession. Jessica, your best friend? She spat the last two words with venomous contempt. Oh, Soph, I am so sorry. That jerk and that snake. You want me to drive to the city and let them have it? No, it's fine. It's not fine. You've got to do something. I know, I know. I just, I can't be here anymore. I need a fresh start and I think coming home might be exactly what I need right now, Sophia explained, her voice wavering. Absolutely. You'll always have a place here. We'll help you get back on your feet, find a job, whatever you need. Don't worry about a thing. Thanks, Lily. That means more to me than you know. Sophia wiped away the tears that threatened to fall and managed a small smile. Hey, you're my big sister. It's my job to look out for you. Lily's voice softened. Let's make something good out of this mess, okay? Okay, Sophia agreed, feeling a flicker of hope amidst the chaos. I'll pack my things and drive down first thing in the morning. Great, I can't wait to see you. We'll get through this together, Lily promised. Thanks, Lil. I love you. Love you too. Drive safe. She ended the call and stared into the lights ahead until her vision blurred with tears. Goodbye, city life, Sophia whispered, gazing out the window at the skyline one last time. Hello, new beginnings. Chapter Two The small mountain town of Pine Haven greeted Sophia with a familiar yet bittersweet embrace. Majestic pine trees lined the winding roads, their branches reaching out like old friends trying to console her in this difficult time. The scent of pine needles and crisp mountain air filled her senses, evoking memories of her childhood spent exploring these very woods. Back to square one, she muttered to herself, gripping the steering wheel tighter as her deep green eyes flicked from her rearview mirror to the road ahead. A heavy sigh escaped her lips, laden with disappointment and regret. She had worked so hard to build a life for herself away from this small town only to return defeated and heartbroken. As her car rumbled across the old wooden bridge leading into the old downtown, she took in the quaint storefronts, each adorned with colorful flower boxes and charming signs. It seemed as though time had stopped in Pine Haven, the town frozen in its picturesque charm. 
Pulling up outside her family home, Sophia couldn't help but feel a pang of nostalgia. The white picket fence and the familiar creak of the front gate instantly transported her back to her youth. She hesitated for a moment, gathering her courage before stepping out of the car. Surprise! Lily, her quirky younger sister, burst through the front door, long blonde hair bouncing behind her. Her arms were thrown open wide, ready to envelop Sophia in a warm embrace. Hey, Lil! Sophia managed to choke out, fighting back tears as she hugged her sister tightly. Welcome home, sweetheart. Helen Matthews appeared in the doorway next, hands on her apron-covered hips. Her graying hair was pulled back in a loose bun, framing her warm brown eyes that sparkled with unshed tears. Thanks, Mom, Sophia replied, feeling a lump form in her throat. John Matthews, her father, stood silently behind Helen, his salt-and-pepper hair and stoic expression a testament to the man who had weathered many storms in Pine Haven's history. Look at you, he said, finally breaking his silence. You've grown up so much since you left. Thanks, Dad. It's been too long. Sophia couldn't help but smile at her father's quiet pride, even though she still felt very much like a little girl, running back home because she got hurt outside on her own. Her father didn't see her that way, though. She knew that beneath his reserved demeanor, there was a deep well of love and concern for his family. As they all gathered around her, their loving embrace felt like a balm on her wounded heart. The warmth and support of her family were exactly what she needed as she took the first steps toward rebuilding her life in the town she had once been so desperate to escape. In the hours following her arrival, Sophia found comfort in the familiarity of her childhood home. The creaking floorboards and the smell of her mother's homemade bread seemed to ease the pain of her recent heartbreak. As she wandered through the rooms, memories flooded back, laughter echoing from sleepovers with friends, the sound of her father playing guitar on the porch, and the soft hum of her mother sewing in the corner. That afternoon, Sophia settled into her old bedroom, surveying the familiar space. Her mother had kept it untouched, a time capsule of her youth. She ran a hand over the quilt on her bed, remembering the hours she'd spent reading books beneath its warmth. A knock rattled the doorframe and Lily entered. Do you remember this? She held up an old photograph of the two sisters as children, dressed in matching overalls, posing in front of their lemonade stand. Sophia grinned. Oh my gosh, we were quite the entrepreneurs, weren't we? Absolutely, Lily replied, chuckling. We made a fortune that summer. Seems like a lifetime ago, Sophia mused, lost in thought. I suppose it's time I rediscover Pine Haven, huh? Definitely. Let me take you around. It'll be just like old times. Sophia smiled. I'd love that. They strolled through town under the dappled shade of oak trees, Lily chattering about local gossip. Everything was both exactly as Sophia remembered, yet somehow different. The park was newly landscaped. Some shops had closed down, and new families moved in. But there was a timeless quality to Pine Haven that soothed her restless spirit. When they passed Java Joy, their family's coffee shop, Sophia's steps slowed. The old red brick building sagged under the weight of years, paint peeling away to reveal the bones beneath. The windows were dark and dingy, masking the warmth and laughter that used to spill out onto the street. It's been tough to keep up with repairs since you and Dad left the business, Lily said quietly. We do our best with the resources we have, but... She shrugged helplessly. Now that I've got a full-time job, there's only so much time in the day. And Mom's no spring chicken anymore. It's pretty much being run by local high schoolers. Guilt gnawed at Sophia's insides. She had abandoned her family to chase empty dreams, and now the foundation of their lives sat crumbling. I'm so sorry, she said thickly. I never should have left. You had to follow your own path, Lily said. Now your path has led you home, and we have a chance to rebuild what was lost. She bumped Sophia's shoulder, eyes glinting with mischief. Besides, every good story needs a little conflict to keep it interesting, right? Sophia barked a laugh and slung an arm around her sister. What would I do without you? Crash and burn, probably. Lily's smile faded into seriousness. 
Mom and Dad aren't as young as they used to be. I think having you home will do them a world of good. She had a lot to make up for, but she was ready to put in the work, starting with restoring the cafe to its former glory. I have an idea, she said, giving the place another once over. But this time, Sophia didn't see the cafe for what it was. She saw what it could be. A fresh coat of paint, new windows to let in the light, outdoor seating for people watching on lazy afternoons, the latest equipment to serve up her mom's famous coffee and pastries, drawing in regulars and visitors alike, a community hub once more, filled with music and conversation, and joy. Her heart swelled in her chest until she thought it might burst. This was it. This was her purpose, her redemption, her way to start over and rebuild what she had once abandoned. She turned to her sister, eyes bright. Lily, do you trust me? Lily blinked at her abrupt question but nodded without hesitation. Of course I do. Sophia took a deep breath and smiled, feeling as though she could take on the world. I think I want to bring Java Joy back to life. Lily gasped, glancing between Sophia and the coffee shop. Are you serious? Absolutely. Sophia grinned, already making plans in her mind. This place was the heart of our family for generations. It's time we restore it to its former glory. But Soph, do you have any idea how much work that will take? Lily asked. The equipment is ancient. The building needs repairs. We'll have to retrain staff. She shook her head. I don't know if we can pull it off. We can do anything we set our minds to. Sophia squeezed her sister's hands. You've kept the doors open all these years. Now let me help you make it thrive again. Lily searched her face as if looking for any hint of doubt, but finding only determination. Okay, she said, smiling softly at her sister's conviction. Let's bring Java Joy back to life, one latte at a time. Deal, Sophia agreed, taking a deep breath as she gazed at the worn sign above the door. There was no turning back now. She was home and she was ready to rebuild both her life and the beloved coffee shop that had anchored her family to Pine Haven for so long. Sophia pulled Lily into a hug, warmth flooding through her. This is going to be an adventure. That's one way of putting it, Lily said wryly. But she was smiling when they headed inside the cafe, armed with a vision for the future and hearts full of purpose. Two caramel lattes, please, Sophia said to the young barista behind the counter. The girl nodded and went to work, trying her best to navigate the clunky, outdated espresso machine. Sophia looked around, taking in the worn-out furniture and faded wallpaper that adorned the walls of the once-thriving coffee shop. Her heart ached as she remembered the laughter and camaraderie that used to fill the room, the scent of fresh pastries and the sound of the coffee grinder creating a symphony of joy. Let's make sure the drinks are still delicious, then we can check out what's behind the front counter. Deal, Lily agreed, but I'm telling you, it's a mess. Here you go. The barista handed over the two cups with a shy smile, interrupting Sophia's thoughts. Thank you, Sophia replied, handing one of the cups to Lily. They grabbed a couple of chairs looking out the front windows, the most perfect spot in all of Pine Haven for some good old-fashioned people watching. So tell me about who is still in town. She asked the question cautiously, hoping Lily would reveal something about her old high school love, Ethan Carter, without her having to ask outright. Lily took a swig of her drink before answering. Well, you know how it is in small towns. Not much changes. The usual suspects still run the show. The Bradleys still own the hardware store. The Williams family still has the real estate agency. And the McIntyres still run the gas station. Sophia chuckled. Sounds like everything is still in order. Yep, Lily agreed. But there are some new faces in town too. The Andersons just moved in next door and I've heard rumors about a new restaurant opening up on Main Street. Oh, interesting, Sophia said, sipping her latte. She had to do something with her mouth before she asked about the one person she'd tried not to think about since crossing the state line. Her history with Ethan Carter was old news. They'd both moved on years ago, so there was no use digging up the past now. Besides, this was Sophia's chance to start over fresh. What kind of restaurant is it? She asked, 
trying to shake thoughts of Ethan from her mind. Maybe we can check it out sometime. I don't know, but I'm definitely down to give it a try, Lily said. For now, though, we should focus on this place. Sophia nodded, setting down her cup. Right, let's get to work. They headed behind the counter and Sophia started to inspect the equipment. Hmm, this machine definitely needs to be replaced, she said, tapping the old espresso machine. It's barely hanging on and the refrigerator is practically prehistoric. Prehistoric might even be an understatement, Lily chimed in with a chuckle. As they moved toward the back of the cafe, they discovered that the storage room had become a chaotic nest of clutter, boxes filled with old supplies, faded decorations, and broken equipment were stacked precariously against the walls, leaving only a narrow path for them to navigate. Wow, Sophia muttered, her voice tinged with disbelief. I didn't realize things had gotten this bad. Neither did I, Lily admitted, her voice soft. It's fine, she said, trying to convince herself. Everything will be totally fine. All right, let's make a plan, Sophia announced rolling up her sleeves and grabbing a notepad and pen. First things first, we need to update the interior. Definitely, Lily agreed, grimacing at the thought of the peeling paint. I know a contractor who could help us out. I'll give him a call right now. Great, Sophia nodded, scribbling down a list of items they would need for the renovation. As they continued making plans, however, Sophia couldn't shake the nagging feeling that restoring the coffee shop wouldn't be as simple as she hoped. She sighed, rubbing her temples as she stared down at their rapidly growing to-do list. What's wrong? Lily asked, concern etching her features. Money, Sophia admitted, her voice barely a whisper. We're going to need a lot more than we have to get this place up and running again. Lily's face fell at the mention of money. I know she said quietly. I've been barely keeping things afloat as it is, and that's without any major renovations. Sophia's mind started racing, looking for a solution. We could try crowdfunding, she suggested. People love supporting local businesses, especially ones with history like this. Lily raised an eyebrow. Crowdfunding? Do you really think people would donate to help us renovate a coffee shop? Sophia sighed, knowing it was a long shot. It's worth a try, right? And if that doesn't work, we could always get a small business loan. Lily nodded, looking a little more hopeful. Okay, let's do it. We can make a video showcasing the history and importance of Java Joy. Maybe that will convince people to donate. Sophia smiled, grateful for her sister's unwavering support. That's a great idea. We can start by going through all that junk in the storeroom. Surely we'll find a little history in there. Chapter 3 The espresso machine let out an ear-piercing shriek the next morning as Sophia tried in vain to coax it back to life. She sighed and wiped the sweat from her brow, smearing a streak of grease across her forehead. Another repair attempt failed. The bell on the front door jingled, and Sophia called out from the back room, Be right there. She grabbed a rag to clean her hands, muttering under her breath about the infernal machine. A familiar voice echoed through the shop. Sophia? She froze. No, it couldn't be. Poking her head around the corner, she saw him standing there, Ethan Carter, her high school sweetheart. He still had that charming smile that made her weak in the knees. Ethan, what are you doing here? Sophia stammered her heart suddenly racing. He rubbed the back of his neck. Well, I got a call about some repair work needed on the espresso machine. Sophia's eyes went wide. You're the contractor Lily called? Sure am, he said with a grin. Small world, huh? A nervous laugh escaped her lips. The guy she never quite got over was now here to fix the family coffee shop. She wasn't prepared for this wave of old feelings crashing over her. Why didn't Lily give her some kind of heads up? Stay focused, she told herself, pushing aside memories of late night drives and stolen kisses. This was just business, strictly professional. She cleared her throat. Right, well, let me show you the problem. As they got to work inspecting the faulty machine, 
Sophia couldn't help but steal glances at Ethan, the way his brow furrowed in concentration, just like when they studied together. The warmth of his hand as it accidentally brushed against hers, sending a spark up her spine. Stop it, she chided herself. Don't go down that road again. It had only led to heartbreak the last time she and Ethan tried to make it work. He didn't want her then, so he certainly won't want her now. She tried to keep her mind on the task at hand as she and Ethan inspected the broken espresso machine, but having him so close again was playing havoc with her emotions. Looks like the pump needs to be replaced, Ethan said, glancing up at her. Their eyes met and Sophia felt her cheeks grow warm. Oh, uh, right. Yes, that makes sense, she stammered, looking away. Get it together, she scolded herself. Ethan gave her a knowing smile and she felt her blush deepen. He always could see right through her calm exterior. I can order the part and come back to install it later this week, he said. Anything else around here need fixing up? Sophia nodded, pushing a stray curl behind her ear nervously. The front door is sticking too, and some of the floor tiles in the back are cracked. No problem, I can take care of all that, Ethan said. They hashed out the rest of the repair details, Sophia trying her best to remain professional. As they finished up, Ethan packed up his toolbox and turned to her. It's really great to see you again, Soph, he said warmly. Maybe after I'm done with all this, we could grab dinner for old time's sake? Sophia's pulse quickened at the invitation. Part of her wanted to say yes so badly, but the other part still felt the sting of their breakup senior year. She didn't know if she could open that door again. I'd love to catch up properly, she said finally. Maybe we could grab breakfast at Lou's instead. I'm still getting the shop back up and running, so I'll be around. Ethan grinned, his eyes crinkling at the corners in that familiar way she'd always loved. Breakfast it is, then. It's a date. Sophia's cheeks flushed. So, uh, what have you been up to all these years? She asked, trying to steer the conversation to safer waters. Oh, you know, a bit of this, a bit of that, Ethan said with an easy laugh took over my dad's contracting business a few years back, keeping busy around town, meeting new people. He gave her a meaningful look and she felt her pulse quicken again. What about you? He continued. I heard you just moved back into town. Sophia nodded, fidgeting with her apron strings. Yeah, after I lost my job in the city, I just wanted something simpler, I guess. Somewhere I could figure things out. Ethan nodded. Well, I'm glad you're back, he said softly. An awkward silence fell between them. Sophia's mind was flooded with memories, late nights talking in the diner parking lot, dancing under the stars at prom, their first kiss by the lake. She shook her head slightly. That was all in the past. She couldn't go through heartbreak again, not so soon after calling off her engagement. I should really get back to work, she said briskly, avoiding Ethan's gaze. Of course, yeah, he said, rubbing the back of his neck. I'll come by first thing tomorrow to fix that door. Sophia gave him a small smile. Sounds good. I'll see you then. She watched Ethan walk out the door, her emotions swirling. It seemed their unfinished business wasn't quite over yet. A deep breath blew from her lips as the door swung shut behind him. Her heart was still pounding from their unexpected encounter. She busied herself wiping down the counter trying to ignore the flood of memories his presence had brought back. But her mind kept drifting to late nights in the diner parking lot, talking for hours with the radio on low. She could almost hear his laugh, rich and warm, as they danced under the stars at prom. Feel his hand on her back as they swayed to the music. The bell on the door jingled again and Sophia looked up, half expecting to see Ethan there again. But it was just Miss Lena, Pine Haven's self-proclaimed town historian, which was actually code for busybody. Miss Lena's age was really showing now, though. She had to be in her 80s by now, so surely she wouldn't be quite so nosy anymore. Hello, Miss Lena. What can I get you? Miss Lena shuffled up to the counter, her eyes scanning the menu board. Well, I'll have a regular coffee, dear. And say, 
Who was that young man who just left? Was that little Ethan Carter? Sophia felt her cheeks flush again. It was. He's going to act as our contractor, here to fix up the place. Miss Lena leaned in, her voice dropping to a conspiratorial whisper. Well, he's not so little anymore now, is he? Is he single? Sophia couldn't help but laugh. I have no idea, Miss Lena. Well, you should find out, the old woman said, winking at her. You two looked mighty cozy together. Sophia's mind flashed back to Ethan's easy smile and the warm way he'd looked at her. Could it be possible he was still interested in her after all these years? Or was she just reading too much into it? She shook her head, trying to push the thoughts away. I'm not really thinking about that right now, Miss Lena. I've got a business to run. Miss Lena chuckled. You remind me of myself at your age. Always too busy for love. But don't let it pass you by, dear. Life has a way of moving faster than you expect. Sophia nodded, a pang of regret tugging at her heart. She'd been so focused on her career and building a life in the city that she'd let her personal life fall by the wayside. And now, at 32, she was back in her small hometown, single and starting over. As Miss Lena shuffled out the door, Sophia let out a deep sigh. Maybe it was time to take a chance on love again. But could she really risk opening her heart to Ethan? Only to have it broken all over again? She shook her head, trying to clear her thoughts. For now, she needed to focus on getting the coffee shop up and running again. There would be time for romance later. Chapter 4 The aroma of pot roast wafted through the house as Sophia walked through the front door. Family photos adorned the walls, capturing moments frozen in time and reminding Sophia of simpler days. A plump, well-worn couch faced a brick fireplace, inviting loved ones to gather around and share stories. In the dining room, her mom had gone all out. The family table was laden with mashed potatoes, asparagus, rolls, and two kinds of pie for dessert. There's my girl. Her dad enveloped her in a hug, the familiar scent of Old Spice aftershave comforting her like a warm blanket. Lily popped up from the sofa, blonde ponytail bouncing. Did you get the paint samples? Sophia patted her purse. Yep, and the fabric swatches for the new booths and chairs. The coffee shop was her baby now, her lifeline after getting laid off. Pouring her heart into the renovation kept her mind off her breakup with Michael. Mostly. Ooh, let me see. Lily grabbed the samples, sorting through them. How about this coral shade for an accent wall? It'll make the shop bright and cheerful. Perfect. Sophia peered over Lily's shoulder, ideas swirling in her mind. We could do the entryway in beadboard and add greenery for a cottage feel, and the booths in a navy blue vinyl. We should try out some seasonal specials, too. You know, pumpkin spice lattes in the fall and peppermint mochas during the holidays. Girls, dinner's ready, their mom called from the kitchen. Sophia squeezed Lily's hand. Thanks for helping with this. I couldn't do it without you. Lily bumped her hip. That's what sisters are for. Besides, I have a vested interest in making sure my future coffee fix is stylish and Instagram-worthy. She grinned. Now let's eat. I'm starving. Sophia laughed, warmth flooding her at being surrounded by the people who loved her most in the world. She took a seat at the table, ready to enjoy her mom's cooking and dream big dreams for her little coffee shop. Her broken heart was slowly mending, held together by the bonds of family. Sounds like you girls are hard at work in there. Got some big plans in place? Huge. Lily flashed Sophia a conspiratorial grin. Sounds wonderful. I can't wait to see the shop once it's all done. Sophia slid into her old seat at the table, inhaling the aroma of her mom's pot roast. This smells amazing, Mom. Thank you for cooking. Her mom waved a hand, cheeks pink with pleasure. Anything for my girls? Besides, your father has been so busy lately, I'm happy to have you both here for a home-cooked meal. Sophia glanced at her dad, noticing the furrow in his brow as he scanned through emails on his phone. He'd always been career-driven, but lately seemed more distracted than ever. 
Sophia chalked it up to the new remote consulting position he'd taken, but it sure seemed to pull him away much more than when he was still running the coffee shop. She cleared her throat. Dad, you're missing mom's pot roast. He blinked up from the screen. Oh, sorry, dear. Big project at work. But he set down his phone, smiling at Sophia's mom. It does smell wonderful. Thank you for cooking tonight. Lily snorted, and Sophia hid a smile behind her hand. Their dad was hopeless. So, did you pick a contractor for the renovations yet? Her mom asked, passing the pot roast. I think you should go with Bob Claiborne. He did such a nice job on the Anderson's sunroom edition. We decided to go with Ethan Carter's company instead. Lily piped up, eyes gleaming with mischief. Did I mention he's built like a lumberjack these days? All muscle and a chiseled jaw? No wonder Sophia wanted his bid. Sophia's cheeks flamed as her parents gasped. Trust Lily to embarrass her as only a younger sister could. That is not why we chose him and you know it, she said through gritted teeth. This was going to be a long dinner. Sophia shot Lily a glare, but her sister just grinned and scooped more mashed potatoes onto her plate. Well, I still think you should have gone with Bob, her mom huffed. Ethan may have certain assets, but Bob has 30 years of experience, and there's a lot less muddy water between you and Bob. Ethan's company came highly recommended and has great online reviews, Sophia said. He gave us a very reasonable estimate, and as far as muddy water goes, it's really not like that. We were basically kids the last time we talked. Things have changed. We're older now. Our past is water under the bridge. I'm sure that's right, her dad muttered, eyes glued to his phone again. Sophia sighed, poking at her pot roast. She'd chosen Ethan's construction company because his bid really was the most affordable, and his work looked top-notch. The fact that he happened to be her high school sweetheart was irrelevant. Completely irrelevant. And it wasn't that her mom didn't like Ethan. She'd liked him quite a bit when they were dating. But mothers don't forgive easily when it comes to broken-hearted daughters. And her mom was there when it all fell apart. She just didn't know the whole story. Anyway, Lily said, looking around the table. I think we can all agree that this is going to be a wonderful new chapter for the coffee shop. Here's to new beginnings, Sophia agreed, raising her glass in a toast. As she caught her father's eye, she couldn't help but notice his distant expression once again. It made her wonder what was on his mind, but she decided not to press him about it, at least not yet. For now, she would focus on the exciting changes ahead for their coffee shop and whatever else the future might hold. After dinner, Sophia cornered Lily in the kitchen. What was that all about? Why did you have to mention Ethan like that in front of mom and dad? Lily blinked innocently. What? I was just describing our handsome contractor. You're up to something. Did you set me up with Ethan on purpose? Lily feigned innocence, widening her eyes and placing a hand over her heart. Moi? I would never. Cut the act, Lil. Sophia couldn't help but smile at her sister's antics, despite her growing suspicion. I know that look. You're definitely up to something. Okay, okay, you got me, Lily admitted with a laugh. I may have known that Ethan was an old flame of yours, and I thought getting you two back together might be just the thing to help you move on from your recent heartbreak. Really? Sophia shook her head, amusement mixed with disbelief. You don't think that's a little... underhanded? Maybe, but I had good intentions. Lily defended herself, grinning cheekily. Besides, you can't deny he's easy on the eyes. Remember those biceps? They could give the rock a run for his money. His muscles are not the point here, Sophia retorted, though she couldn't argue with her sister's assessment. What if things get awkward between us while working on the remodel? I'm trying to focus on rebuilding my life, not diving into another complicated relationship. Who said anything about a relationship? Lily teased, waggling her eyebrows suggestively. I just thought it might be fun for you two to reconnect, see if there's still a spark there. No pressure, no expectations, just a little harmless flirting to boost your spirits. Sophia sighed, knowing there was no point in arguing with her sister once she'd set her mind on something. All right, fine, 
but just so you know, I'm not looking for anything serious right now. Of course not, Lily agreed readily, her eyes twinkling with mischief. But who knows? Maybe fate has other plans. Very funny, Sophia muttered, rolling her eyes even as she felt a small kernel of hope take root within her. Maybe reconnecting with Ethan wouldn't be such a bad thing after all. But I need you to understand that I'm not ready for anything serious yet. I just got out of a long-term relationship and I need time to heal. Sure, Lily replied, raising her hands in surrender. I hear you loud and clear. No pressure, no expectations. Just take things slow and see how they go. Exactly, Sophia agreed, nodding firmly. Her thoughts drifted momentarily to Ethan, and a surge of butterflies took flight in her stomach. She shook her head, trying to dispel the unexpected reaction. Now was not the time to get swept up in old feelings. Speaking of taking things slow, Sophia continued, trying to regain control of the conversation. I've actually made plans to have breakfast with Ethan tomorrow morning at Lou's diner. Not as a date, but just to catch up and discuss some plans for the renovation. Really? Lily's eyes lit up and a wide grin spread across her face. That's fantastic. How are you feeling about it? Sophia hesitated before answering, searching for the right words to describe the mix of emotions she was experiencing. I guess I'm a little nervous, honestly. It's been so long since we last sat and really talked with each other, and I don't know what to expect. Hey, it's just breakfast, Lily reassured her, resting a comforting hand on Sophia's shoulder. You'll catch up, chat about the coffee shop, and who knows? Maybe you'll find out you still enjoy each other's company. Maybe, Sophia conceded, biting her lip as she considered the possibility. She knew deep down that she wasn't ready to jump back into a serious relationship, but perhaps there was no harm in exploring the connection she once shared with Ethan. After all, hadn't her most recent heartbreak taught her the importance of taking risks and embracing new opportunities? All right, Sophia said finally, meeting Lily's gaze with a mixture of resolve and uncertainty. I'll go to breakfast with Ethan tomorrow, but I'm doing this for me, not because you set us up. Fair enough, Lily agreed, her eyes twinkling with unspoken delight. Just promise me one thing. What's that? Sophia asked warily, eyeing her sister with suspicion. Promise me, Lily said solemnly, that you'll order the biggest stack of pancakes on the menu and enjoy every single bite. Sophia couldn't help but laugh, feeling her tension and nerves dissipate as she realized how ridiculous the situation had become. Deal she replied, shaking her head in amusement. Now, can we please get back to discussing the coffee shop? Of course, Lily agreed, her laughter joining Sophia's. Let's focus on building your dream business. And who knows? Maybe along the way you'll rebuild your heart too. They continued to discuss the coffee shop renovations as they made their way back into the dining room to clear the table, and Sophia couldn't help but steal glances at her father. He had been unusually quiet throughout the conversation, his eyes distant as he fiddled with a napkin in his hands. Knowing her father was typically a lively and engaging presence at family gatherings, Sophia's concern grew with every passing minute. Hey, Dad, she asked tentatively, interrupting Lily's enthusiastic description of their plans for new furniture. Is everything all right? You seem a bit... preoccupied. Her father looked up, startled, as if he hadn't even realized he'd been lost in thought. Oh, I'm sorry, sweetheart, he apologized, forcing a smile onto his face. I didn't mean to drift off like that. It's just something on my mind, nothing to worry about. Are you sure? Sophia pressed gently, unconvinced by his reassurances. You know you can talk to us if something's bothering you. Really, it's nothing her father insisted, waving off her concerns with a dismissive gesture. Just some old memories resurfacing, that's all. Old memories? Lily echoed curiously, her interest piqued. Like all those old memories Sophia's enjoying about Ethan Carter? Sophia shot her sister a warning glance, but it was too late. Their father's expression had darkened, and he seemed to be struggling for words. 
Well, yes, he admitted finally, his voice strained. But it's not something you girls need to worry about. Just an old disagreement between our families, water under the bridge now. An old disagreement? Sophia repeated, her heart pounding in her chest as she recognized the tension in her father's demeanor. It was clear there was more to the story than he was willing to share, and she couldn't help but wonder how this mysterious conflict might affect her budding relationship with Ethan. Look, her father sighed, running a hand through his graying hair. I don't want to get into the details right now. It's ancient history, and I'd rather focus on the present, on your coffee shop and your new life here in town. Just be careful, Sophia. People have long memories in this town, and sometimes the past has a way of catching up with you when you least expect it. Sophia swallowed hard at her father's ominous words, feeling a chill run down her spine as she considered the implications of what he was saying. Was there more to her connection with Ethan than she had realized? And could their family's shared history derail her chance at happiness before it even began? All right, Dad. Sophia agreed reluctantly, her voice barely above a whisper. I'll be careful. Good, her father replied, his eyes filled with concern as he reached across the table to squeeze her hand. Just remember, sweetheart, no matter what happens, we'll always be here for you. The room fell silent the weight of his words heavy in the air. The tension still hovered over them like a dark cloud, a sense of foreboding that lingered long after they had finished their meal and said their goodbyes. As she lay awake in bed that night, her thoughts raced with unanswered questions and unspoken fears, unsure of what the future might hold, but certain that her life was about to change in ways she could never have anticipated. Chapter 5 Steam swirled around Sophia as she rushed through the front door of Lou's diner the next morning, escaping the cold front that had rolled through overnight. The aroma of fresh coffee and cinnamon rolls enveloped her. Over here! Ethan waved from a cozy booth in the corner, two mugs already on the table. Sophia hurried over, clutching her knitted scarf. Sorry I'm late. No worries. His warm smile melted her nerves. I got you your usual. You remembered. She slid into the seat across from him, admiring his broad shoulders beneath a well-worn flannel shirt. His tousled hair was windblown and still damp from a shower, reminding her of their early morning drives to school together in high school. Of course. You never changed your order in the four years we dated. Ethan's eyes glinted with amusement. A blush crept up Sophia's cheeks as she recalled snuggling up against him in this very booth. We spent so much time here, I'm surprised we didn't have a frequent flyer program. Ethan chuckled, the deep sound reverberating through her. We probably would have earned a free trip to Tahiti. I could use a beach getaway. Sophia sighed, thinking of her uncertain future after losing her job and life back in the city. She stared into her mug, avoiding Ethan's gaze. He placed his calloused hand over hers, sending a jolt of warmth through her body. You'll land on your feet. You always do. She smiled up at him, a flicker of hope igniting inside her. In that moment, it was as if the last ten years had never happened. She was just a small-town girl falling for the boy next door all over again. As they waited for their meals, the conversation flowed easily between them. Sophia found herself laughing more than she had in weeks, grateful for the familiarity that came with being around Ethan again. Remember that time we tried to roast our own coffee beans at your house when we were teenagers? Ethan asked, his eyes lighting up with amusement at the memory. Oh my gosh, yes. We ended up with grounds everywhere and the coffee tasted like mud. Sophia recalled, giggling at the thought. My dad was so mad when he saw the mess we made. Hey, it was a learning experience, Ethan defended playfully. Now I can make a mean cup of joe thanks to that disaster. Glad you could learn something from it. You also taught me to be quite the poet, he said. Remember that English project senior year? Sophia chuckled. Yeah, I remember. You spent more time trying to make me laugh with your ridiculous Romeo and Juliet impersonations than actually working on the project. Hey, I was just trying to bring some life to those old, dusty words, 
he defended, feigning offense. Besides, you have to admit my, O oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo, was pretty spot on. More like a dying cat, Sophia teased, playfully swatting his arm. Ouch, Ethan winced, rubbing the imaginary wound. Your words are like daggers, fair lady. Sophia laughed again, feeling a warmth in her chest that had nothing to do with the hot coffee they were sipping. It felt good to reminisce about their shared past, but it also stirred up emotions she hadn't felt in years. She glanced over at Ethan, who seemed lost in thought as well. Those were some good times, huh? She asked quietly, unsure of how much she should reveal about her current emotional state. Definitely, Ethan agreed, his voice tinged with nostalgia. It's nice to have you back in town, Sophia. I've missed you. Same here, she admitted, her heart skipping a beat at his words. She felt the warmth of Ethan's gaze on her, the corners of his mouth lifting in a subtle smile. Her heart raced, and she couldn't help but remember how that same smile used to make her weak in the knees back in high school. Had it always been this easy between them? Hey, Ethan began, leaning against the table with a playful glint in his eyes. Did you ever think we'd end up working together again like this? She chuckled, shaking her head. Not in a million years, but I guess life has a funny way of bringing people back together. Tell me about it, he agreed his eyes searching hers for a moment before he looked away. You know, there was always something special between us, even back then. Do you think... He hesitated, seemingly unsure of how to continue. Think what? Sophia prompted, curious about where his thoughts were leading. Do you think maybe those feelings never truly went away? Ethan asked softly, his eyes meeting hers once more. She could see the vulnerability in his expression and it made her own heart feel exposed. Sophia felt a wave of fear wash over her. She quickly forced herself to lean back and take a deep breath, calming her racing heart. She couldn't deny the strong connection they had, but she still wasn't ready for anything more. Her recent engagement had ended in betrayal and heartache, and she wasn't ready to jump into another relationship with Ethan so soon. She cleared her throat, attempting to keep a casual tone. I don't know about that, she said avoiding his gaze. We both moved on, and a lot has happened since then. But have we really moved on? Ethan pressed, his expression intense. I know I haven't been able to shake the feeling that we belong together. Sophia felt her heart rate pick up again, her mind racing as she searched for a response. She wanted to give him the honesty he deserved, but she couldn't deny the feelings stirring inside her. I don't know, Ethan she finally admitted, her voice barely above a whisper. You were the one who said you wanted to end things back then. I cared about you then, and I still do as a friend now, but I need time to figure things out. Ethan's face softened and he reached across the table to take her hand. I understand, Sophia, he said. I'm not trying to push you into anything you're not ready for, but I want you to know that I'm here for you, no matter what happens. Tears pricked at the corners of her eyes, touched by his words and his unwavering support. She squeezed his hand, feeling a sense of comfort and security. Thank you. You have no idea how much that means to me, she said, her voice thick with emotion. He smiled at her, his eyes softening. I mean it. I care about you, Sophia. Her heart skipped a beat at his words, and for a moment... She allowed herself to imagine what it would be like to be with Ethan again, but she quickly pushed the thought away, reminding herself that she needed time to heal and figure out what she wanted. Let's just take it slow and see where things go, Sophia said, a small smile tugging at the corners of her mouth. Ethan's grin widened and he leaned back in his seat. Sounds good to me. Let's backtrack then. Tell me something I don't know about you. His eyes held Sophia's, and she found herself mesmerized by the intensity of his gaze. Um, I once ate an entire jar of Nutella in one sitting, she offered, her cheeks flushing at the memory. Ethan chuckled, his dimples appearing like magic. Impressive, he said, playfully raising an eyebrow, and probably not the healthiest choice. Definitely not, 
she conceded, laughing along with him. But it was during finals week in college, so I think I get a pass. Fair enough, Ethan agreed, his laughter subsiding as he studied her face. Now it's your turn to ask me something. All right, Sophia replied, feeling an inexplicable tension building between them. Their bodies seemed to lean closer to each other as if pulled by an invisible force. What's the craziest thing you've ever done? Once, during a summer storm, I went streaking through town, Ethan confessed, his eyes twinkling with mischief. Sophia gasped, her hand flying to her mouth as she stared at him in disbelief. Are you serious? She exclaimed, trying to picture the scene in her head. Dead serious, he assured her. I was dared by my buddies, and well, I've never been one to back down from a challenge. Sophia shook her head, a smile tugging at her lips. You never cease to amaze me. As they finished their meals, Sophia couldn't help but feel grateful for the connection she and Ethan shared. It was like they never really lost touch, and the chemistry between them was undeniable. But she also knew that she needed to be cautious and not rush into anything. She had been burned before, and she didn't want to make the same mistake twice. After paying their check, Ethan leaned across the table and took Sophia's hand in his. I know we both have a lot to figure out, he said softly, his eyes locked onto hers. But I want you to know that I'm willing to wait for you for as long as it takes. Sophia's heart swelled with affection for him. You're really something, Ethan, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. Chapter 6 the sun cast a warm glow on the worn wooden floors of Java Joy. Sophia stood inside her family's cozy establishment, scanning the interior as she mentally took note of the work ahead. Despite the coffee shop's charm, the years had taken their toll, and it was now time to breathe new life into the space. Ladders and drop cloths were scattered throughout the room, along with cans of fresh paint and rolls of wallpaper ready to transform the once-dated decor into something more modern and inviting. And as good as it felt to finally have a plan in place, Sophia realized that there was a crucial element missing, a new barista to help manage the increased workload once the shop reopened. The stress of overseeing the remodel had left her feeling stretched thin, and she knew she couldn't handle everything on her own. Okay, I've got to hire someone, she muttered to herself pulling out her phone to post an ad online. Maybe some fresh talent will be just what this place needs. Sophia spent the following days juggling her responsibilities, carefully balancing between supervising the renovations, trying to keep things professional with Ethan, and reviewing applications for the barista position. The weight of these tasks weighed heavily on her shoulders, but she refused to crumble beneath the pressure. Memories of her high-pressure job haunted her, reminding her of the resilience she had developed over the years. Finding the perfect barista is essential, she thought, sipping her coffee as she sifted through resumes. She needed someone who could handle the hustle and bustle of this place, while also bringing a bit of charm to their small town. Indeed, it seemed that a new barista would be the missing piece to Sophia's puzzle, helping her navigate through the challenges of breathing new life into the old coffee shop. As the applications continued to pour in, she knew that her search for the ideal candidate had only just begun. One cool morning as the renovations were nearing completion, Sophia arrived at the shop ready to interview applicants for the barista position. She needed help to handle the rush of customers once the shop opened, but she wanted someone with the right personality and experience. The first applicant was a young college student named Isaac. Though he had experience making coffee drinks, he didn't seem interested in engaging with customers. I just need a part-time job to pay for books and stuff, he said with a shrug. Sophia crossed his name off the list. She needed someone passionate who would make her customers feel welcome. The second applicant, Jennifer, had the opposite problem. She gushed about her love of coffee and desire to spread positivity, but she had never actually worked in a coffee shop or anywhere else. Sophia doubted she could handle the fast-paced environment during peak hours. With a sigh, Sophia checked the time. She only had a few more applicants left before the shop officially reopened, and she was no closer to finding the right hire. The renovation had drained more of her funds than expected, and she couldn't afford another mistake. 
Just then, the door chimed as her final applicant of the day walked in. Sophia looked up from her notes to see a young woman with bright red hair and a smile that could light up a room. Hi, I'm Maggie. Are you Sophia Matthews? Before Sophia could respond, Maggie breezed on. I heard you were hiring through my friend Jen, who runs the flower shop down the street. I have three years of experience making lattes, cappuccinos, and pretty much any coffee drink you can imagine. But more importantly, I love connecting with new people. There's nothing quite like being a part of someone's morning routine and sending them off with a smile, you know? A smile tugged at Sophia's lips. Maybe her luck was about to change. She stood up and extended her hand. It's nice to meet you, Maggie. Please, have a seat. Maggie shook her hand enthusiastically. You too. I have to say I'm a big fan of what you're doing with the place. She glanced around at the half-painted walls and exposed wiring. It's got great bones. Lots of character. Thank you, Sophia said. To be honest, the renovation has been more work than I anticipated. But it's good to hear you appreciate the vision. Absolutely, Maggie leaned in conspiratorially. Between you and me, this town could use a little sprucing up. You're bringing some much-needed style and flair. Sophia found herself grinning. She liked this girl's spirit. So, why are you interested in working here? And why should I hire you over the other applicants? A few reasons, Maggie said. One, I'm fast. During peak hours, I can whip up a dozen lattes like that. She snapped her fingers for emphasis. Two, I'm a people person. I'll have your regulars chatting and smiling in no time. And three, I'm looking to settle down in one place. I've been traveling for the last few years. I'd like to reconnect with my roots and working at a place like this would be perfect. Maggie's enthusiasm was infectious, but Sophia still had her doubts. This job can be demanding, especially with the renovation. Are you sure you're up for that level of commitment? Absolutely, Maggie said without hesitation. Look, I know I seem like a bit of a free spirit, but I'm ready to plant some roots and commit to a place I care about. And honestly, she glanced around the shop again. I just love getting to meet people. There's always something new to learn or an interesting story to hear. Sophia studied Maggie for a long moment, considering. She did seem genuinely excited about the prospect, and she had the right experience. But did she have the dedication to stick with it during crunch time? There was only one way to find out. All right, Maggie Wilson, she said. You've got yourself an apron. Maggie's face lit up, and Sophia smiled back, hoping she wouldn't come to regret her decision. Can you start tomorrow? Absolutely. Maggie jumped up and pulled her into an exuberant hug. You won't regret this, I promise. This is going to be the start of something great. Sophia patted her back awkwardly unused to such displays of affection from near strangers. But she had to admit, it was nice to see someone so genuinely happy about joining her team. Another. The next morning, Maggie burst through the front door of the coffee shop, red hair flying behind her as she rushed to tie on her apron. I'm so sorry I'm late, she exclaimed. There was a kitten stuck in a tree on my street and the fire department had to come rescue it. I didn't want to leave until I knew it was safe. Sophia blinked at the odd explanation, then shook her head with a smile. It's all right. You're only five minutes late. Just jump in and I'll get you up to speed. Perfect. You won't even know I was gone, Maggie said cheerfully. She popped behind the counter and set to work preparing for the morning rush. As the first customers trickled in, Maggie's bright laughter rang out, charming several regulars who were usually grumpy before their coffee. She rattled off orders at record speed, never losing her enthusiasm or bubbly demeanor. When the initial rush died down, Maggie leaned against the counter with a contented sigh. This is even more fun than I thought it would be. All these interesting characters coming through the door and getting to make each one their perfect pick-me-up. I can see why you love it here so much. You're catching on quick, Sophia said, impressed in spite of herself. She glanced out the window at the people passing by on the sidewalk, a surge of affection for her cozy town sweeping over her. This place has a special kind of magic, she said softly. I'm glad you can feel it too. Maggie bumped her shoulder. 
Looks like we're going to make a great team, boss. Small town charm, here we come. Sophia bumped her back, an easy smile slipping onto her face. So, I know I'm new here, but it's pretty clear that you're putting some real effort into making this place great. And I have some ideas. Go on. A smile pulled at Sophia's lips as she braced herself for whatever was coming next. Okay. So I was thinking we should start planning some events to really get the community involved. Maybe a movie night or a book club or... Whoa, slow down! Sophia laughed. We just reopened. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. But people love this kind of thing, Maggie protested. It's perfect for our cozy, charming space. Come on, live a little. Sophia shook her head, unable to keep from smiling. Maggie's enthusiasm was infectious, even if it did get ahead of itself at times. All right, if you really want to plan something, pick one event to start with. We do need something to offer for our crowdfunding project. Maybe this could be an exclusive tier or something, but keep it small and simple. Yes, Maggie pumped her fist. You won't regret this. I have so many ideas already. As Maggie launched into a lengthy list of possibilities, Sophia felt a surge of gratitude for her friend's support. Maggie had given her the push she needed to start embracing life in her hometown again, and she knew that with her help, Java Joy would become the heart of the community once more. She couldn't wait to see what the future held. Chapter 7 The storeroom was dimly lit, with only a single bulb hanging from the ceiling. Dust particles floated through the stale air as Sophia and Maggie rummaged through stacks of boxes that sat in front of the door that led to the space upstairs above the shop. Goodness, you were right. I can't believe how much junk has accumulated back here over the years, Maggie said, wrinkling her nose at the musty smell. Sophia smiled, brushing a cobweb from her forehead. Well, at least clearing it out will give us something to do while Ethan finishes out the trim in the front. She glanced through the open storeroom door, where Ethan stood on a ladder, chiseling away at the old woodwork. His strong arms flexed with each swing of the hammer, and Sophia felt a familiar flutter in her stomach watching him. Earth to Sophia, Maggie said, snapping her fingers. Am I going to have to separate you two? I know he's an old flame, but we've got work to do. Sophia blushed. Right, sorry. Let's see what else is in these boxes. They sifted through old menus, broken dishes, and other knickknacks from decades past. Just a bunch of junk. I don't think any of this is even in good enough shape to donate. Better to look through it all than to miss something really valuable, though. It's like my granny always said, haste makes waste. We've got plenty of time. Unless you're in a hurry to find out what's behind that creepy old door back there. Sophia laughed. There's nothing creepy back there. It just leads upstairs to the unfinished second story. Knowing my mother, it's probably full of even more boxes of junk. She shuddered at the thought of going through a whole extra floor full of this stuff. They continued for a bit longer, and Sophia was about ready to give up for the day when Maggie gasped. What did you find? She asked, moving beside her new friend. Maggie held up a faded manila folder. I think these are really old documents about your family's business. Sophia's eyes widened. Neat! These must go all the way back to when my great-grandparents got settled in town. She took the folder, her thoughts racing. What treasures from her family's past could be hidden in these pages? She met Maggie's curious gaze, knowing they were both wondering the same thing. Should we take a look? Maggie asked. Absolutely. Let's see what my family was up to all those years ago. She opened the folder slowly, the old pages crackling. Maggie leaned in as Sophia began to read the storeroom fading away as some unexpected secrets of the past finally came to light. Inside the folder were copies of legal documents between her great-grandparents, and to her surprise, their counterparts from Ethan's side, a dispute over the land rights where the coffee shop was built. As Sophia read, she could almost hear her ancestors' voices in each faded word, as if they were speaking to her across time. This must have been quite a scandal back in the day. As she continued to read, the situation only got worse. Ethan's great-grandparents had accused Sophia's great-grandparents of stealing their land, 
and it had resulted in a long and bitter feud between the two families many years before she was born. Sophia's heart sank as she read through the legal jargon, shame rising in her chest. How could she have not known this about her own family's history? Did we really steal this very land that we're standing on? Maggie's hand found her shoulder, squeezing gently. Hey, don't beat yourself up over this. There are two sides to every story. And even if it's true, it's not like you had control over what your ancestors did. Worst case scenario, maybe this could be an opportunity for you and Ethan to finally put this old family feud to rest. Sophia nodded, grateful for her friend's support. You're right. Maybe I should fill Ethan in on all of this and see if we can be the ones to bury the hatchet. What hatchet? Ethan's deep voice interrupted from the doorway, making Sophia and Maggie jump. He was covered in sawdust and wore a playful smirk on his handsome face. Sophia took a deep breath, clutching the old documents in her hand. I found something interesting in these old papers. It turns out that our families had a dispute over this land when the coffee shop was first built. Ethan's expression turned serious as Sophia handed him the documents to read, and Maggie stood awkwardly to the side, unsure whether to stay or give them privacy. I had no idea, he said after a moment. But that was so long ago. We shouldn't let something like this get in the way of what we're working on today. Sophia felt a weight lift from her shoulders at his easy acceptance. I agree. Let's keep the past in the past. Maggie clasped her hands together. I love happy endings. Sophia smiled, but inside she wasn't sure it would be so easy. If they had truly stolen this land, then she would have to find a way to make it right. If not for her family's reputation, then for her own conscience. She remembered her father's words from dinner. People have long memories in this town, and sometimes the past has a way of catching up with you when you least expect it. A shiver worked its way up her spine. You all finished out there? She asked, turning her attention back to Ethan. For today. Great. You want to take a walk? They had some things to discuss. Ethan smiled. Sure. Where to? Let's go to the park, Sophia said, picking up her bag from the floor and stuffing the documents inside. I could use some fresh air. Ethan nodded and followed her out of the storeroom. As they stepped outside and into the fading twilight of fall, a cool breeze brushed against their cheeks. The leaves were starting to turn orange and red, fluttering down from their branches like fiery stars in the night sky. They took a quiet path through the town square, Sophia leading them with determination as if she knew exactly where they were going. Conversation was normally easy between them, but Sophia found herself growing more nervous with each step closer to the park. When they finally arrived at their destination, Ethan guided her over to an empty bench beneath a sprawling oak tree. As he held her gaze before sitting down beside her, his expression softened with compassion, like he knew whatever she was about to say wouldn't be easy. Is everything okay? I hope so. Sophia sat and steeled herself for what she had to ask. Do you think your family knows? About the dispute? Ethan sighed. I don't know. I haven't spoken to my family about anything Pinehaven related in years, ever since they moved back to the city, and I doubt they would even care at this point, but it's possible. Sophia nibbled on her lip, trying to keep her emotions in check. And what if they do? What if they come after us for the land? Ethan casually stretched his arm across the bench behind her, just like he used to do when they were young and it took everything she had not to curl into his side for the comfort she knew she'd find there. I wouldn't let them bring you any strife. If my family was involved in something unethical, I want to make it right, she said quietly. We've always prided ourselves on being pillars of the community. Ethan gently squeezed her hands. I know, but the sins of the fathers aren't yours to bear. People know you, Sophia. They won't judge you for the actions of your ancestors. Sophia sighed. I hope you're right. But if this caused real harm, I have a responsibility to make it right somehow. She thought of the close-knit small businesses around the town square. Had they also suffered from her family's greed? 
What about the working class families just scraping by? Had her privilege come at their expense? The questions weighed heavily on her. Hey, Ethan said, tilting her chin up to meet her eyes. Whatever happened, we'll face it together. I'm here for you. Despite the gravity of the situation, Sophia's heart fluttered at his touch. She managed a small, grateful smile. With Ethan by her side, she could be brave. We should figure out if this land is legally still yours, she said finally, turning to Ethan with determination in her eyes. But we'll need to research more into the legalities of it all and see what our options are. It might take some time, but in the end, I want us to find a solution that works for both of us. He smiled, reaching out for her hand and giving it a gentle squeeze. It's a deal. Sophia took a deep breath and collected her thoughts. Okay. First things first. We need more information. I'll call my dad in the morning to see if he knows anything about these documents. Ethan nodded. Good idea. And I have a buddy who works at the Historical Society. He might be able to dig something up in their archives. Then it's a plan. Let's meet up again after lunch to compare notes. I will see you then. Ethan hesitated like there was more he wanted to say, but after a long pause, he stood, stretching out his hand to help Sophia up. He didn't let go as they made their way back to the coffee shop where their cars were parked. And Sophia was happy to feel his fingers in hers again. They fit like an old glove, and that was exactly the kind of comfort she needed after the day's discovery. Chapter 8 Sophia sat at her parents' mahogany dining table the sun streaming in through the bay window. The scent of freshly brewed coffee and buttery croissants filled the room, and it was nice to enjoy a morning at home now that she had Maggie taking care of things up at the shop. Or it would have been nice if not for the task at hand. Her fingers danced across the keyboard of her laptop as she dove further into her family's history. She had been researching for hours, uncovering stories and secrets from generations past. Yet, nothing could have prepared her for what she discovered next. Mayor Thomas Caldwell? She whispered, her green eyes widening with disbelief. The name jumped out at her from an old newspaper article. It detailed a scandal involving her parents and the charismatic mayor, who was accused of embezzlement and bribery. A cold wave of anxiety washed over her. This just kept getting messier. Were her parents actively involved? Sophia bit her lip, trying to suppress the panic that threatened to bubble over. Is everything okay, sweetheart? Her mother called from the kitchen, wiping her hands on her apron. Uh, yeah, mom, Sophia replied, forcing a smile. Just researching some family history. Find anything interesting? Her father asked, entering the room with a steaming cup of coffee in hand. He set it down beside her, his bushy eyebrows raised in curiosity. Actually, Sophia hesitated, her heart pounding in her chest. Should she tell them? Would they be angry or disappointed? She knew she couldn't keep this secret to herself. I found something about Mayor Caldwell. Thomas Caldwell? Her father asked, his tone guarded. What about him? Apparently, there was a scandal involving him a while back, Sophia said, her voice wavering. I found an old article saying he was accused of embezzlement around the time you awarded him those contracts from your consulting gig. I, I don't know what to think. Silence. Then. I see. His voice had gone eerily calm. That was a long time ago. Caldwell was never formally charged. But Dad. Leave it be, Sophia. His tone brooked no argument. The past is the past. Do not pursue this any further. Sophia's hands curled into fists, and she closed her laptop with a bit too much force. How could he dismiss this so easily? Didn't he realize this could destroy everything they'd built if it came to light? But she knew that tone. He would not be reasoned with. She had uncovered a truth that was meant to stay buried. The question was, could she live with that? Later that day, Sophia's fingers traced the grooves of the wooden bench as she waited for Ethan in their usual meeting spot at the park. The afternoon sun filtered through the leaves above, 
casting a dappled pattern on her jeans. Her heart felt heavy with the weight of her family's secret, and she hoped that opening up to Ethan would offer some semblance of relief. Hey, you, Ethan said, his voice deep and warm as he approached. He flashed that charming smile that always made her feel weak in the knees. I got your text. What's going on? Sophia swallowed hard, meeting his concerned gaze. Ethan, I need to tell you something. Something I learned about my family while I was researching the land dispute. Of course, you can tell me anything. His sincerity shone through his brown eyes, making her feel even more vulnerable. But she knew she had to share the truth with him. Okay, well, it turns out those documents we found in the storeroom are not the only scandal in my family's past. My parents and Thomas Caldwell may have been involved in some illegal activities more recently, Sophia murmured, her voice barely audible. Wait, you mean our town's mayor? Ethan asked, his brows furrowing in surprise. Sophia nodded, her stomach twisting with worry. Yes, it happened years ago, and nobody was officially charged with anything. But when you add it to the land dispute documents, things aren't looking good for my family. She buried her face in her hands. I'm afraid if we stir the pot and any of this comes to light now, it could damage our family's reputation. I think the coffee shop is at risk. And worse than that, my family's livelihood, my parents' house, everything. If they get charged with some of these crimes... Ethan reached out and took her hand, his calloused fingers intertwining with hers. Sophia, I don't care about your family's past. That doesn't change how I feel about you. We all have skeletons in our closets. We can find a way to work through this. As Sophia tried to process Ethan's reassuring words, her gaze drifted from his comforting eyes to Miss Lena, who was sitting on a nearby bench. She seemed to be absorbed in her knitting, but Sophia couldn't shake the feeling that she might have overheard their conversation. Thank you, Sophia said quietly, trying to focus back on him and the support he was offering. I just hope everyone can be as understanding as you are. Did you say something to Miss Lena about your research? Ethan asked, noticing the direction of Sophia's gaze. No, I haven't mentioned anything to her. Why? Ethan leaned in closer and lowered his voice. She seems to be paying a lot of attention to our conversation. Sophia glanced at Miss Lena again, this time catching the elderly woman with her ears perked up, eyebrows raised, and her knitting needles momentarily paused. Miss Lena? Sophia called out hesitantly, trying to gauge the woman's reaction. Ah, Sophia, dear. And Ethan. Miss Lena feigned surprise as if she hadn't been eavesdropping. I didn't see you there. What a lovely day for a chat in the park. Indeed it is, Ethan replied, his tone guarded. What brings you here today, Miss Lena? Oh, just my usual knitting, soaking in the sun and enjoying the peaceful atmosphere, she answered with a smile that didn't quite reach her eyes. As Sophia studied Miss Lena's face, she noticed the slight twinkle in her eyes a knowing look that suggested she understood the gravity of the situation they were discussing. Panic began to bubble in Sophia's chest. That old woman might look harmless, but Sophia knew what kind of a gossip she was. Miss Lena, Sophia said, her voice wavering slightly. Did you happen to overhear what we were talking about earlier? Dear, at my age the hearing isn't what it used to be, Miss Lena replied with a kind smile. But don't you worry. I'm sure whatever you youngsters discuss doesn't concern an old lady like me. Right, of course not. Sophia tried to sound convincing, but she couldn't ignore the nagging feeling that Miss Lena knew more than she was letting on. Anyway, Ethan interjected, trying to shift the focus away from their earlier conversation. How's your latest knitting project coming along, Miss Lena? Slowly but surely, Ethan. The arthritis doesn't help, but it keeps me busy, she said resuming the steady rhythm of her knitting needles. Sophia watched Miss Lena for a moment longer, her heart pounding, before turning to Ethan. Maybe we should head home, she suggested quietly, still feeling uneasy despite Miss Lena's seemingly harmless demeanor. Or better yet, Ethan proposed, squeezing her hand gently. 
Why don't we forget about all this for one night and go on a proper date? A proper date? Sure. You know that thing people do sometimes, like where I pick you up and we go to a restaurant or a movie or something? I'll probably shower so I don't smell like sawdust for a change. Maybe there will be flowers. I'll be on my best manners, I promise. He made a cross over his heart, which made the playful grin on his face all the more endearing. A proper date, she repeated. Her answer should be a resounding no. She was still fresh off of an engagement for goodness sakes. But when he looked at her like that, okay, okay. Ethan's grin stretched a mile wide. Okay, tomorrow night? I will see you then. Miss Lena, I hope you have a pleasant evening, Sophia called out as they walked away from the bench. You too, dear, Miss Lena replied, her eyes never leaving her knitting project, the ghost of a knowing smile playing on her lips. Chapter 9 the bell above the door chimed as Maggie, Lily, and Sophia entered Graceful Threads, a charming local boutique on the main stretch of downtown Pine Haven. The cozy scent of vanilla candles enveloped them along with the warm hues of amber and gold that adorned the shop's interior. Racks of clothing in an array of colors and styles lined the walls, while tables displayed a variety of accessories to complete any outfit. All right, ladies, Maggie announced with a grin, rubbing her hands together. Operation, Make Sophia Dazzle on Her Date is officially underway. Lily giggled, looping her arm through Sophia's. We'll have you looking like a million bucks in no time. Please, Sophia rolled her eyes playfully. I just need a nice outfit, not a complete makeover. Leave it to us, Soph, Maggie assured her, her bright red hair bouncing as she strutted over to a rack of dresses. First up, this little number. She held up a vibrant purple dress that was, quite frankly, a bit too short for anyone's taste. Are you trying to make me look like an eggplant? Sophia laughed, shaking her head at her friend's outrageous choice. Fine, Maggie relented, returning the dress to its place on the rack. But I still think you'd rock it. As they continued browsing the boutique, they stumbled upon some fun and quirky finds, a hat shaped like a pineapple, a pair of sunglasses adorned with tiny sunflowers, and even a purse shaped like a teacup. Maggie tried on each item with enthusiasm, causing laughter to erupt from her friends. Okay, seriously, Lily said, catching her breath between chuckles. Let's find you something perfect for your date with Ethan. Agreed, Sophia nodded, growing more excited at the prospect of seeing him again. They had just started sifting through a collection of elegant blouses, when Sophia's ears perked up at the sound of her family's name being mentioned by a group of women standing near the cash register of the boutique. She tensed, her heart pounding as she strained to hear their conversation. Could they be discussing the scandal? Her past? The changes that Matthew's girl has made at Java Joy have been fantastic, haven't they? One of the women said, and Sophia let out a pent-up breath. It was just a false alarm. They were only talking about the recent improvements at the coffee shop. Hey, what about this one? Lily suggested, drawing Sophia's attention back to the task at hand. She held up a soft, cream-colored blouse with delicate lace detailing around the neckline. That's beautiful, Maggie agreed, nodding her approval. It would look amazing on you, Sophia. Thanks, Sophia smiled grateful for her friend's unwavering support and their ability to keep things light even when the weight of her past threatened to bring her down. The high afternoon sun cast a warm glow on the quaint downtown streets as the women continued their outing a while later, multiple shopping bags swinging from each of their arms. All right, ladies, I'm starving, Maggie announced, her stomach audibly growling. Shall we make our way to that cute little cafe over there? Perfect, Sophia agreed grateful for the chance to sit down and catch her breath after their shopping spree. The three women made their way to a cozy outdoor table nestled under a vibrant canopy of orange and red maple leaves. As they browsed through the menu, Maggie leaned forward, mischief sparkling in her eyes. So, details. What are you eating tonight? Where is he taking you? Have you thought about how the evening might end? A blush crept up Sophia's neck as she took a sip of her lemonade. 
I haven't even seen Ethan yet today. We're meeting at the trailhead at six, and he said to wear durable shoes. Beyond that, I have no idea what he has planned. Ooh, a hike under the stars. Lily clasped her hands together dramatically. How romantic. Sophia wrinkled her nose, though a smile tugged at the corners of her mouth. You two are going to dissect every moment of this date, aren't you? Absolutely, Maggie grinned. After all the time we spent picking out the perfect outfit, we're invested now. Sophia hesitated, stirring her iced tea absentmindedly. She knew her friends meant well, but the thought of dating again after her recent breakup made her heart race with anxiety. I don't know, guys. I appreciate your support, but I still don't know if this is a good idea. She twisted her napkin in her lap, a knot forming in her stomach. What if it's a disaster? I'm not sure I'm ready to trust someone new after. She trailed off, but she didn't need to say the name. They all knew who had left her with scars that had only just begun to heal. Lily scooted her chair closer and squeezed Sophia's hand. Ethan isn't him. You've known Ethan for as long as I have, and he's one of the good ones. Kind, patient, honest to a fault. She's right. Maggie nodded. Just take things slow. Have fun and don't forget why you're really here. For you. If at the end of the night you realize it's too soon, that's okay. But you'll never know if you don't give it a chance. Sophia gazed at her friends, heart swelling with gratitude. They were right. She couldn't hide away forever. And if there was any man in this town she could trust, it was Ethan. And there's no pressure, Lily said gently, reaching across the table to pat Sophia's hand. We just want you to be happy, and we think Ethan could be really good for you. But it's ultimately up to you, sis. Listen, Maggie interjected, her voice serious but kind. It's okay to feel scared, but you can't let fear hold you back from experiencing life and love. You're stronger than you give yourself credit for, Sophia. Remember when we were kids? Lily chimed in, a nostalgic smile on her face. We used to say that love was like diving into the deep end of the pool, not knowing if we'd be able to swim back up for air. Exactly, Maggie exclaimed, grinning. You just have to take the plunge, Sophia. Trust yourself and trust Ethan. Give him a chance to show you what real love can be. Sophia took a deep breath, letting their words wash over her as she mulled them over. She knew they were right. If she didn't at least try, she'd never know what could have been. And maybe, just maybe, she could find happiness with Ethan again. Okay, she finally conceded, meeting her friend's encouraging gazes. I'll give it a shot. I'll try to be more open-minded and give Ethan a real chance. Yay, Lily cheered, clapping her hands together. Maggie smiled warmly at Sophia, proud of her friend's decision to embrace vulnerability and take a chance on love. As the conversation continued, Maggie took a sip of her iced tea and leaned back in her chair, a thoughtful smile on her face. You know, Sophia, I totally get where you're coming from. Honestly, after all my travels and adventures, I'm not really interested in finding love right now either. Sophia raised an eyebrow, intrigued by Maggie's admission. Really? She asked, genuinely surprised. Yup, Maggie replied with a shrug tucking a strand of her bright red hair behind her ear. Before I settled down here in Pine Haven, I was always on the move, exploring new places, meeting interesting people, living life to the fullest. And even though I love it here, I still have that itch for adventure, you know? So, for now, I'm happy just being me. No romantic entanglements necessary. Lily sighed dreamily as she listened to Maggie's words her gaze drifting across the street to a couple holding hands as they strolled along the sidewalk. That sounds wonderful, Maggie. But, unlike you, I've always dreamed of finding a man to settle down with, she confessed, her voice tinged with longing. Unfortunately, it seems like everyone in Pine Haven is either taken or just not worth my time. Maggie chuckled, nodding her agreement. Yeah, it can be tough to find Mr. Wright in such a small town, huh? Absolutely, Lily grumbled, absently stirring her salad with her fork. 
but who knows? Maybe one day someone new will come into town and sweep me off my feet. Or maybe, Sophia suggested gently, you just need to give some of the local guys a chance. You never know what might happen if you look past first impressions. Lily considered her sister's words, her eyes filled with uncertainty. Maybe, she murmured, though she didn't sound entirely convinced. Speaking of new people, Maggie said, her eyes fixed on something across the street. She pointed at a nearby building with a sold sign posted prominently in the window. It looks like we're going to have some new neighbors soon. Lily leaned forward, squinting at the distant storefront. Oh, you're right. I wonder what kind of shop it'll be. Maybe it's a bookstore, Sophia suggested, her heart lifting at the thought. She'd always loved getting lost in the pages of a good book, and the idea of having a cozy little bookstore in town was appealing. Or a bakery, Lily exclaimed, her eyes lighting up. I would love to have fresh pastries every morning. Or maybe, Maggie chimed in, her face assuming an overly dramatic expression. It's a secret lair for a dashing international spy who's decided to retire in our humble little town. Really, Maggie? Sophia laughed, shaking her head at her friend's wild imagination. Hey, you never know. Maggie shrugged, winking at them. But the point is, Pinehaven is always changing. New people come and go all the time, so don't give up hope just yet, Lily. True, Lily admitted, still eyeing the sold sign thoughtfully. Who knows? Maybe my Prince Charming will walk right into this town one day. See? Maggie grinned. Anything can happen. I wish I had that kind of confidence in love, Sophia said with a sigh. It's okay to question things, Maggie assured her, her tone kind and understanding. After all, love isn't something you can fully understand or predict. It's messy and complicated, but that's what makes it beautiful too. Definitely, Lily agreed. And sometimes you learn the most about yourself and what you want in a partner when things don't work out. Like my travels before settling down here, Maggie added, her eyes twinkling with memories of adventure. I had some wild flings and heartbreaks, but they all helped me become the person I am now, and I wouldn't trade that for anything. Exactly, Lily nodded. So instead of focusing on finding the one, maybe we should just enjoy the journey and learn from our experiences. Spoken like true philosophers of love, Sophia said, smiling fondly at her friends. Their words of wisdom and encouragement warmed her heart, and she knew she was lucky to have them by her side as she navigated the uncertain waters of romance. Anyway, Lily chimed in, eager to lighten the mood. The important thing is that we're all here for each other, right? Whatever our romantic futures hold, or don't hold, we've got a pretty amazing friendship to lean on. Let's toast to that, Maggie suggested, raising her coffee cup. To love, life, and the lessons we learn along the way. Cheers, Lily and Sophia echoed, their cups clinking together as they celebrated this new bond of friendship that would carry them through whatever adventures lay ahead. Chapter 10 Sophia pulled into the gravel parking lot, the crunch of stones under her tires breaking the silence of dusk. As the trailhead came into view, she spotted Ethan's familiar form leaning against a wooden signpost his dark hair tousled by the gentle breeze. I was starting to think you'd stood me up, he teased as she got out of the car. Sophia smiled sheepishly. Sorry I'm late. You know how my mom is. She talked my ear off as I was trying to leave. Ethan chuckled, his laugh warm and comforting. No need to apologize. I'm just happy you're here. He stepped closer and Sophia's breath caught, her nerves vanishing instantly. His presence was so inviting, so genuine. She had forgotten how good it felt to be around him. The trailhead was bathed in the soft golden glow of twilight, the sun dipping below the horizon and casting long shadows across the path ahead. The atmosphere was peaceful and enchanting, with the sound of crickets providing a melodic backdrop to their conversation. A cool breeze rustled through the trees, carrying the scent of pine and fresh earth, making Sophia feel truly alive in the moment. It was peaceful. Perfect. Wow, it's so beautiful up here, she breathed, 
gazing around at the stunning landscape. Isn't it? Ethan agreed, his eyes following hers. I thought this would be the perfect spot for us to reconnect. Reconnect. The words seemed to hang in the air between them, heavy with the weight of their shared history and unspoken feelings. They both knew, however, that they were on the precipice of something new and exciting. Ethan offered his arm. Shall we? Sophia looped her hand through, skin tingling where they touched. Lead the way. They started down the trail, gravel crunching underfoot. You know, I was surprised when you suggested this, Sophia said with a playful grin. Hiking under the stars seems awfully romantic for two old friends catching up. Ethan glanced sidelong at her, lips quirked. Catching up? I thought this was a proper date. You're right, I did concede to a proper date, didn't I? She laughed. That's right, and you know it has been ten years. I thought we could stand to get reacquainted. Is that so? Sophia kept her tone light despite the flutter in her chest. Absolutely. For example, I don't know your favorite constellation anymore. Sophia laughed again. Oh, well, that simply won't do. The banter came so easily, so naturally. It amazed her sometimes how she could just fall right back into rhythm with Ethan, like no time had passed at all. He had always been able to put her at ease. They continued down the trail, the comfortable conversation flowing. The nerves Sophia had felt earlier melted away completely, replaced by a warmth that had everything to do with the man at her side. She had missed this, missed him, more than she cared to admit. As they rounded a bend in the trail, Sophia caught sight of a small clearing bathed in silvery moonlight. A cozy picnic setup awaited them beneath the stars. Plaid blanket, wicker basket, battery-powered candles. He'd thought of everything. Wow, Ethan, you really went all out, she marveled at the romantic scene before her. Only the best for our special night, he replied with a wink, leading her to the blanket. He carefully helped her sit down, making sure she was comfortable before settling beside her. Let's see what we have here, Ethan said, opening the basket. He pulled out a bottle of wine, an assortment of cheeses, and fresh fruit, each item making Sophia's eyes widen with delight. Perfect, she murmured, her stomach rumbling in anticipation. Almost forgot something. Ethan added, reaching into the basket once more and producing a thick, warm blanket. In case it gets too cold. Sophia smiled appreciatively as he draped the extra blanket over their shoulders, allowing them to snuggle closer together while they sipped wine from disposable cups and sampled the delicious spread. Look at the stars, Ethan whispered after a while, his gaze drawn upward. The sky overhead was a tapestry of shimmering celestial bodies, painting the dark canvas with twinkling points of light. Wow, it's breathtaking, Sophia agreed, her eyes tracing the constellations above. That one looks like a lion, she pointed out playfully. The truth was, she didn't know anything about constellations, and she doubted Ethan did either. Ah, Leo, Ethan nodded, smirking as he played along fierce and regal just like you. Is that so? She raised an eyebrow, unable to suppress a laugh. Well then, Mr. Charming, what constellation would you be? Me? He pretended to ponder for a moment, tapping his chin thoughtfully. I'd say Orion, the great hunter. Orion, huh? Sophia teased with a smile. More like the great flirt. Guilty as charged. Ethan chuckled, his warm brown eyes twinkling in amusement. Their laughter filled the air, lighthearted and carefree, as if their past heartaches had been washed away, leaving only the undeniable attraction between them. Above them, Sophia traced the constellations across the inky sky with her finger, her thoughts growing more sincere. I always loved stargazing with you, she said softly. Ethan's eyes were tender. Me too. A comfortable silence settled between them. The woods were hushed except for the occasional hoot of an owl. Sophia shivered as a breeze rustled the trees. Noticing, Ethan shifted closer on the blanket. Here. 
He wrapped an end tighter around Sophia's shoulders. She leaned into him, head coming to rest in the crook of his neck like it was the most natural thing. Like no time had passed at all. Despite everything that's happened lately, I'm really glad we're here together, Sophia confessed, her voice softening. Me too, Ethan echoed, his hand finding hers beneath the blanket. It's like fate brought us back together for a reason. Maybe it did, Sophia mused, her eyes meeting his, her heart swelling with hope and affection. For now, they let the past stay where it belonged, behind them. Instead, they focused on the present moment, savoring the closeness, the laughter, and the undeniable connection that bound their hearts together under the vast, starlit sky. Sophia took a sip of her wine, the warmth of the liquid contrasting with the cool breeze that rustled the leaves around them. You know, she began, setting her plastic cup on the blanket. I've been thinking a lot about my future lately. Really? Ethan asked, his brow furrowing in concern. What's on your mind? I think it's time for me to move out of my parents' house, for one thing, Sophia admitted, her green eyes meeting his. I love them, but I need some space, not just physically, but emotionally, too. When I picked up and left the city, I'd only planned to stay here for a few days. But now I don't want to go back. Pine Haven has always been my home. A smile spread across Ethan's face, the corners of his eyes crinkling with genuine happiness. I'm glad to hear that. There's something special about this town, isn't there? There really is, Sophia agreed, picking at a grape absentmindedly. So I was thinking, after the grand reopening of Java Joy, as long as business continues to stay strong, maybe I could find a place of my own here. Actually, I have an idea. Ethan leaned in closer, his voice filled with enthusiasm. You know the space above the coffee shop? You already own it, so why not convert it into a living space? There are several other storefronts downtown that have second-floor apartments. Some owners even rent them out for extra income. Sophia's eyes widened, and she considered the possibilities. The more she thought about it, the more excited she became. That actually sounds perfect, but I'd need help remodeling the space. I don't even know where to begin. Hey, you're looking at the local contractor, Ethan said with a grin, puffing out his chest playfully. I'd be more than happy to help you with that. And who knows? If you don't like it, you could always rent it out and find another place. What? Ethan, that's way too generous. Sophia touched his arm. You've already done so much for me since I've been back. I want to, he insisted. It's no trouble, really. I'd love to help you get settled here. As much for me as for you. I like having you back in town. Sophia's eyes welled up with unshed tears touched by the kindness in his offer. With Ethan's help, she could create a place that truly embodied the warmth and charm of Pine Haven. A place where she could finally put down roots and build a future for herself, maybe even with him. Thank you, she whispered, her voice thick with emotion. I can't tell you how much this means to me. Anything for you, he replied earnestly, his brown eyes softening as they locked onto hers. As the night deepened around them, their conversation continued, filled with laughter, heartfelt moments, and a shared excitement for the new chapter unfolding before them. I'm really glad you decided to stay, he said softly. I know Pine Haven must seem small compared to the city, but... It's perfect, Sophia finished. She meant it. This little town had a charm she'd never found anywhere else, and the company wasn't bad either. Ethan reached over and tucked a stray curl behind her ear. Sophia's breath caught at his touch. I missed you, Soph. His voice was low and rough. All these years apart, I could never stop thinking about you. Me too. The words slipped out unbidden. But they were true. No one had ever made her feel the way Ethan did. His face was so close now she could feel his breath warm on her cheek. Sophia's pulse quickened. She wet her lips unconsciously. Ethan's eyes dropped to her mouth, and before she knew what she was doing, she closed the space between them. As their lips met, 
a rush of emotions flooded through Sophia. Warmth, comfort, joy, and an undeniable sense of belonging. The kiss was tender, yet filled with a passion that had been simmering beneath the surface for years. It was like coming home. Ethan's lips were firm yet yielding against hers. His hand slid into her hair, angling her head to deepen the contact. Sophia melted into him and sighed into the kiss, all the tension and hurt from their years apart dissolving. In this perfect moment, nothing else mattered but the two of them together under the stars. When they finally broke for air, Ethan rested his forehead against hers. I'd forgotten how amazing that feels. Me too, Sophia admitted, her heart still racing. I don't want to mess this up again, he murmured. Sophia stroked his cheek. We won't. We're not the same people we used to be. He turned his head to press a kiss to her palm. I'm still going to help you with that apartment. No arguments. His eyes twinkled. Sophia laughed. Fine, but I'm helping too. It's my place after all. Deal. Ethan pulled her close again. Sophia grinned, her green eyes glistening with unshed tears. She suddenly felt lighter, as if a weight she hadn't even realized she was carrying had been lifted from her shoulders. Together, they sat on the picnic blanket, hands intertwined, embracing the renewed bond between them. Here's to new beginnings, she toasted, raising her glass of wine, and to rediscovering old connections. Cheers, Ethan agreed clinking his glass against hers. As they sipped their wine, side by side under the starlit sky, Sophia couldn't help but feel that everything was falling into place, just as it was always meant to be. Chapter 11 The bell attached to the door of the coffee shop jingled frantically as Miss Lena Johnson fussed with the handle and finally burst through, her cheeks flushed and silvery hair askew. Her hazel eyes scanned the room nervously, finally settling on Sophia, who was wiping down a counter near the entrance. Oh, sweet heavens, Miss Lena exclaimed, fanning herself with one hand while clutching her cane tightly in the other. Sophia, child, I need to speak with you. Sophia took note of the urgency in Miss Lena's voice and immediately set aside her cleaning rag. She shot a concerned look at the elderly woman trying to assess whether this had to do with what she had overheard during Sophia's conversation with Ethan in the park. Suppressing her own worries, Sophia put on a warm smile and approached her. Miss Lena, what's wrong? She asked gently, guiding her to a booth in the back corner, away from the other customers. Come, let's sit down. Thank you, dear, Miss Lena panted, easing into the seat with visible relief. I just... I couldn't wait any longer. This is too important. Sophia poured her a cup of coffee, black, just the way she liked it, and handed it to her before sliding into the seat across from her. She studied the older woman's face, trying to decipher what could have caused such distress. As much as she wanted to directly question Miss Lena about listening in on her conversation with Ethan, she knew the woman's well-being was a priority. Miss Lena, please tell me what's going on, Sophia urged her green eyes filled with concern. You're scaring me a little. Forgive me, dear, Miss Lena said, sipping her coffee and visibly calming down. I didn't mean to startle you. It's just that I've uncovered something, something that might change everything for you and your family given your recent discovery. She knew Miss Lena had been listening, but it didn't seem like she was keeping it much of a secret anymore. Something had happened. Change everything? Sophia repeated, her heart rate increasing as she tried to wrap her mind around Miss Lena's words. What do you mean? Let me explain. It's about the Caldwell family, their past actions and how it might impact your family's future and the entire town. Sophia's eyes widened as she considered the implications of that revelation. She knew Miss Lena had a reputation for being in everyone's business, but that also meant the elderly woman was usually right on the money when it came to local matters. The recent discoveries she'd discovered about her family history was still shrouded in mystery, but if the Caldwell family had some skeletons of their own. Please go on, Sophia urged, 
leaning forward and clasping her hands together on the table. Her previous caution was replaced by an intense curiosity. Maybe this new information could help her make sense of her own family's past. Miss Lena took a deep breath, as if stealing herself for what was to come. The Caldwell family has been rotten for as long as I can remember. Thomas Caldwell likes to put on a charming act for the public, but behind closed doors that family is involved in all sorts of unscrupulous behavior. Sophia's stomach tightened into knots. She wanted to protest that the mayor had always seemed like an upstanding member of the community, but she held her tongue. After what she'd discovered about the near scandal between him and her parents, she wasn't so sure anymore. She needed to hear Miss Lena out. Blackmail, bribery, swindling hardworking people out of their livelihoods, the old woman continued, her voice lowering to a harsh whisper. And it goes back generations. Thomas's father and grandfather were no better. How is this possible? Sophia asked, genuine shock etched across her features. Someone would have spoken up before now. Not in Pinehaven, Miss Lena replied grimly. The Caldwells have been controlling this town for over a century. They target vulnerable families and businesses, get them in their debt, and then force them to stay silent. It's a vicious cycle, and now it seems they have their sights set on your family's prosperity. Sophia slumped back against the booth, her mind reeling. The pieces were starting to fall into place, her family's constant financial struggles while she was growing up, her father's desperation to find work outside of the coffee shop a few years back, and the sudden appearance of the Caldwell family in her life. It was all starting to make sense now. But what can we do? Sophia asked, a hint of hopelessness creeping into her voice. If what you're saying is true, they have all the power. We can fight back, Miss Lena declared, a fierce determination in her eyes. We can band together, you, your family, and the rest of us in Pine Haven who have been victimized by the Caldwells. We can take our town back. Hope filled her chest at Miss Lena's words, but she couldn't shake off the fear and uncertainty that still lingered in her mind. But what if we fail? What if they come after us? Miss Lena reached across the table to grasp her hand. We won't fail, and even if they do come after us, we'll face it together. I'm telling you this because you deserve the truth, and because it's time someone put a stop to them once and for all, she said fiercely, covering Sophia's hand with her own. The fate of Pinehaven depends on it. Sophia gave Miss Lena's hand a gentle squeeze gratitude and determination warring inside her. Thank you for telling me the truth. I promise you, we won't let the Caldwells get away with this any longer. The older woman nodded, her eyes shining with purpose. That's exactly what I hoped you'd say. Now, would you like to hear the whole story? Sophia nodded eagerly. Where do you want me to start? At the beginning, Sophia said. Tell me everything about how my family got tangled up in this mess. It was back in the late 1800s, Lena began. Your great-grandparents moved to Pine Haven and purchased 200 acres of beautiful farmland. Even then, the Caldwells had their greedy eyes on controlling as much of the town as possible. When your family refused to sell their land, the Caldwells started a nasty smear campaign, spreading lies and rumors to turn the town against them. Sophia frowned. But that doesn't explain how they ended up with half the land. What did the Caldwells do? They didn't just spread rumors, Lena said darkly. They resorted to threats and violence. Your great-great-grandfather was attacked one night and left for dead. The Caldwells made it clear that the rest of the family would suffer the same fate if they didn't sign over half their land. Sophia gasped, appalled at the cruelty and injustice of it all. Her hands curled into fists as anger bubbled up inside her. They can't just take what they want through force and intimidation. But they did. And not just to your family. They sold those same 200 acres to the Carters as well. Sophia gasped. You're kidding. How could they get away with that? By preying on the Carters' desperation. They had lost their own land and had nowhere else to go. The Caldwells offered them a deal, half the land, at a price they could barely afford. But of course, they couldn't pay the full amount, 
and so the Caldwells squeezed them and squeezed them until they had no choice but to sell their half back to the Caldwells, at a fraction of the price they had bought it for. Miss Lena shook her head in disgust. It was a despicable way to do business, but they've been doing it for decades, ruining families, monopolizing the town's resources, and expanding their own power and influence? Sophia leaned back in her seat, her mind reeling with the weight of Miss Lena's revelations. She had always known there was something rotten at the heart of Pine Haven, but she had never imagined it was this bad. And now, with her family's livelihood at stake, she knew she had to take action. We have to stop them, Sophia said firmly, her vision clear. We can't let them keep doing this to our town and our families. Miss Lena nodded firmly. I agree, and I think I have an idea of where we can start. Sophia leaned forward, hungry for any plan that could help her take down the Caldwells. We need to make sure the truth about their business practices and their past is known, Miss Lena said. They've been able to keep everything under wraps because they control so much of the town's resources, but if we can get the word out, it could be enough to turn the tide. Sophia's heart lifted at the idea. How do we do that? We start by gathering evidence. I've been keeping track of their activities for years, and I know plenty of other people who have stories to tell. We just need to find a way to get it out. I was thinking the Harvest Festival might be the perfect place to set the truth free. Most of the town will be in attendance. Sophia met Miss Lena's determined gaze and set her jaw. Tell me what I need to do. How do we find this proof? The Caldwells have had decades to cover their tracks. Anything incriminating is surely long gone by now. Not necessarily, Miss Lena said with a sly smile. The Caldwells have always been arrogant, believing they're untouchable in this town. They've left clues if you know where to look. We search public records at the library, historical society archives, even abandoned properties around town. And we ask questions, discreetly, of course. There are lifetime residents with long memories who may know things they've kept secret out of fear. If we dig deep enough, we'll find what we need. Sophia considered the monumental task ahead. Taking on the powerful Caldwell family wouldn't be easy, or without risk. But how could she walk away from this? Pine Haven deserved justice and freedom from the Caldwell's corruption, and her family deserved to reclaim what was rightfully theirs. Ethan's family deserved that too. She looked at Miss Lena with renewed determination. Where do we start? The woman's wrinkled face split into a triumphant grin. Follow my lead, my dear. We have work to do. She grabbed her bag and trailed Miss Lena out of the coffee shop, her mind racing with plans for the Caldwell's downfall. The family had ruled over Pine Haven for far too long. It was time for a revolution. Chapter 12 Sophia paced the floor of the empty coffee shop, impatiently awaiting Ethan's arrival. He'd sent her a text earlier about some exciting plans he had in mind for the remodel, and as badly as she'd wanted to call him and tell him everything she'd learned from Miss Lena, she knew a face-to-face -face conversation would be better, especially with this new revelation that his family may have been swindled as well. Finally, he walked in the door, his face lit up with excitement. Hey, Sophia he said, giving her a quick hug. You won't believe what I came up with for your new apartment. Come upstairs and I'll show you. Without waiting for her answer, he grabbed her arm and dragged her up the stairs to the unused space above the coffee shop. His excitement was contagious, and soon Sophia found herself too caught up in his enthusiasm to slow him down with the bad news. It could wait a few minutes. Before we go inside, Ethan said, pausing outside the door, Try to envision the possibilities, not just what you see now. His voice carried a note of hope, and Sophia couldn't deny the infectious nature of his optimism. Okay, she replied, taking a deep breath and preparing herself for the unknown. And with that, Ethan opened the door, ushering her into the dusty space above the coffee shop. The door creaked open to reveal a large open space that spanned the entire width of the coffee shop below. Sunlight filtered through grimy windows, illuminating years of dust motes floating lazily in the air, creating an illusion of tiny galaxies swirling about. The room had been gutted down to its bare bones, 
with only a few support beams breaking up the vastness. The original hardwood floor groaned under their feet as Ethan and Sophia stepped inside, curiosity taking hold of them. Wow, Sophia muttered, her voice barely audible over the soft creaking of the floorboards. This place is huge, isn't it? Ethan beamed, his eyes sparkling with excitement. I know it's a bit rough around the edges, but just imagine it all fixed up. Walls here, a kitchen there. He gestured vaguely around the room, trying to paint a picture for her. Sophia squinted, attempting to see what he saw. But all she could envision were the cobwebs hanging from the ceiling like tattered curtains and the cracked plaster that lined the walls. I don't know, she began, doubt creeping into her voice. It's going to take a lot of work to make this place livable. Of course it will, he agreed, undeterred by her skepticism. But that's part of the charm, isn't it? We'll be able to create something truly special here. She glanced around again, trying to find the allure that Ethan seemed to see so clearly. All right, let's say we do manage to fix this place up. What about the noise from the coffee shop downstairs? He grinned, stepping closer to one of the grimy windows. That's easy, he said sliding it open with a slight struggle. We'll install soundproof insulation between the floors and these old windows. We'll replace them with double-paned glass to keep the noise out. Sophia raised an eyebrow, impressed by his confident response. Okay, but what about privacy? I mean, we're right in the heart of town. Simple, he replied, tapping one of the support beams. We'll put up walls where they make sense like around the bedroom and bathroom, and we can get you some custom coverings for these giant front-facing windows to use in the evenings. Despite her doubts, Sophia couldn't help but smile at Ethan's unwavering enthusiasm. She took another look around, trying to see the potential through the layers of dirt and dust. And the layout? she asked, her voice still tinged with uncertainty. Ethan stepped over to her side, his arm brushing against hers as he gestured to various points in the room. Picture this. Open concept living and dining area, a cozy little kitchen tucked away in the back corner, and a spacious master suite with a walk-in closet and ensuite bathroom. He paused, searching her eyes for any sign of approval. What do you think? She considered the space once more, attempting to overlay Ethan's vision onto the dusty reality before her. She could feel the warmth of his body next to hers, and it was becoming difficult to separate her growing feelings for him from the task at hand. Despite her lingering reservations, she found herself nodding slowly. All right, she conceded. I can see it. It's going to take a lot of work, but maybe we can make something wonderful here. Plus, Ethan added, grinning as he looked around the space, there's plenty of room for a small family to grow, or, you know, a dog. He winked at Sophia, his eyes twinkling with mischief. She couldn't help but laugh, her earlier hesitation momentarily forgotten. A dog, huh? You think I'm ready for that kind of responsibility? Absolutely, Ethan replied, playfully nudging her shoulder with his own. I've seen you handle a coffee machine during the morning rush. If you can survive that, you can handle anything. Ha! Huh? Funny you should mention that, she said rolling her eyes and smirking. I was actually thinking about getting a dog before, well, you know, everything happened. Well, between you and me, I think little Fido will be much happier here in Pine Haven than with that jerk you left behind in the city. Ethan's face softened, his gaze warm and sincere. Just imagine a little pup running around playing with toys, maybe even stealing your socks. He chuckled enjoying the image he had created. Sophia found herself smiling at the thought, her heart swelling with affection for both the idea of a dog and the man standing beside her. As their laughter died down, an unspoken tension lingered between them, their eyes locked together in a moment of vulnerability and connection. All right, Sophia said, finally breaking the silence. Let's say I'm on board with this vision of yours. What's the first step in bringing it to life? Ethan took a deep breath, 
his chest rising and falling as he considered the question. First things first, we'll need to clear out all this dust and debris. Then we can start planning the layout and design. Really make this space your own. Sounds like a plan, she agreed, her voice barely more than a whisper. His kindness was almost overwhelming. How did she get so lucky to fall back into Ethan Carter's arms? She didn't deserve a guy like him. Great, he said, his voice equally hushed. He took a step closer, his eyes never leaving hers. I'm really looking forward to working on this project with you, Sophia. Me too, she replied, her heart beating faster in her chest. Me too. The tension in the room was palpable, and Ethan's eyes seemed to search for something within her own. She felt a magnetic pull towards him, as if an invisible thread was drawing them closer together. The dusty air of the apartment above the coffee shop danced around them like golden specks caught in a sunbeam. Can I? Ethan began, his voice barely audible as he tentatively reached out to brush a stray curl away from her face. His touch sent a shiver down Sophia's spine, and she found herself unable to do anything but nod in agreement. They leaned in closer until their foreheads were almost touching, and Sophia felt the warmth radiating from his body. She closed her eyes and inhaled the scent of coffee and cedarwood that clung to his clothes, savoring the moment before it passed. Their lips met softly with a tenderness that left her breathless. The kiss was sweet, sincere, and everything she wanted. And Sophia felt herself falling even faster for this man. But fear soon won over and she quickly took a step back, cutting the moment short. Even so, she couldn't deny the ache in her heart as Ethan stepped away from her an ache that reminded her of all the things they had endured over the years. So, I wanted to tell you about an interesting conversation I had earlier. Sophia cleared her throat and stepped toward the windows overlooking the busy main street down below. She needed to put some space between her and Ethan if she wanted any hope of thinking clearly. Miss Lena came into the shop earlier in a tizzy. All right, he said, his eyebrows furrowing in concern. What did she say? She mentioned that the Caldwells have a history with your family. Apparently, there have been bad blood and disputes between the Caldwells and many of Pine Haven's founding families for generations. Sophia paused, trying to gauge Ethan's reaction. And she thinks they might have had a hand in causing the land dispute between our families way back when, too. Ethan's eyes narrowed in thought as he considered the Caldwells' history. You know, now that I think about it, there have been several instances where the Caldwells have tried to buy land from families around town just before some kind of dispute or financial trouble surfaced. Really? Sophia asked, her curiosity piqued. Yep, Ethan confirmed. Sophia chewed on her lower lip, mulling over this new information. Do you think they wanted to weaken our families by causing the dispute and then swoop in to acquire our lands? Could be, Ethan said with a shrug or maybe they simply enjoy watching others struggle. Hard to say for sure without more evidence. Ugh, people like that make me so angry, Sophia huffed, her green eyes flashing with indignation. How can anyone take pleasure in seeing others suffer? Unfortunately, there are all kinds of people in this world, Ethan replied, his jaw tightening in a show of disapproval. But we won't let them win, Sophia. We'll figure this out and set things right. She looked at him grateful for his unwavering support. Thank you, Ethan. It means a lot to have you by my side through all this. Always, he promised, his dark eyes filled with sincerity. She glanced around the apartment, seeing it with fresh eyes. You know, now that we're in this together, I think I can really start to see the potential in this place. Really? Ethan said the corners of his mouth lifting into a smile. What do you envision? Maybe a cozy living room over there, she said, pointing to one corner of the dusty space. And a spacious kitchen where we could, I mean, someone could cook delicious meals for their family. Sounds lovely, Ethan agreed, his voice softening at her slip of the tongue. Of course, there'd have to be room for Fido too, Sophia added with a teasing smile. Absolutely. He chuckled, playing along. I figured he'd get the second bedroom. Perfect, she sighed, 
leaning against him as they shared a quiet moment. No matter how complicated her life had become over the last several weeks, somehow being with Ethan made it all seem a little more clear. Chapter 13 The autumn sun cast its warm glow over the town square as Sophia and Lily strolled past the bustling city workers. They were setting up for the annual harvest festival, which was always a highlight in their small mountain town. The colorful leaves on the trees surrounding the square seemed to dance in the crisp breeze, creating a picturesque scene that could have easily been plucked from a postcard. Look at all this, Lily exclaimed, her eyes wide with excitement as she took in the preparations. I love this time of year. The whole town comes together for the harvest festival. Sophia nodded, though her gaze drifted to the stage being assembled, its wooden planks like bones rising from the earth. This year the festival felt hollow, the joy stained by her family's downfall. Mayor Thomas Caldwell emerged from behind a group of workers, his short graying hair perfectly coiffed, and his piercing blue eyes scanning the scene before him. There's Mayor Caldwell, Sophia observed quietly to Lily as she watched him approach. He wore his signature navy suit, impeccably tailored to fit his trim figure, and a red power tie that screamed confidence. Ah, uh, yes, our beloved mayor, Lily replied sarcastically, rolling her eyes. Mayor Caldwell spotted the sisters and raised his hand in greeting, a practiced smile plastered across his face. It was the kind of smile that politicians mastered early in their careers, the kind that made them appear warm and friendly while concealing their true intentions. Hello, ladies, he called out, his voice booming with faux cheerfulness. Are you looking forward to the festival this weekend? Of course, Mayor Caldwell, Sophia replied politely, returning his smile with one of her own. She had learned long ago that it was best to play nice with the influential people in life and business, even if their motives weren't always clear. It's always a wonderful event. Indeed it is, he agreed, his eyes flitting between the sisters as if trying to gauge their sincerity. Well, I hope you both have a fantastic time. Enjoy the festivities. With that, Mayor Caldwell gave one last wave and disappeared back into the crowd, leaving Sophia and Lily to continue their stroll through the square. Ugh, that man, Lily muttered under her breath as soon as he was out of earshot. He's so fake. I don't understand how people don't see right through him. Sophia sighed, her thoughts drifting to the recent troubles she'd faced. She knew all too well that appearances could be deceiving, and that sometimes, the most charming people hid the darkest secrets. But she didn't want to dwell on any of that now. Let's shift gears. Did I tell you that Ethan's planning to renovate the apartment above the coffee shop for me? Lily's eyes widened, her curiosity peaked. Really? What does he have in mind? Sophia grinned, eager to share the details. He mentioned an open concept space adding a breakfast nook by the window, and even installing a skylight over the bed. Can you imagine how lovely that would be? Wow, that sounds amazing, Lily gushed, her eyes sparkling with enthusiasm. I'm so happy for you, Soph. You deserve something nice like that after everything you've been through. Thank you, Sophia replied, touched by her sister's genuine happiness for her. There's just one thing, though. What's that? Lily asked, sensing her sister's hesitation. Ethan wants to surprise me with the finished product, so he's asked me to stay away while he works. Sophia bit her lip, her excitement momentarily overshadowed by a flicker of concern. I trust him, but it's hard not knowing what's happening right overhead, you know? Lily nodded, understanding her sister's need for control, especially after the turmoil she'd faced recently. Yeah, I get it but maybe this is a good opportunity for you to practice letting go a little. Trust Ethan. He knows what he's doing, and I'm sure he'll make your place beautiful. Maybe you're right, Sophia conceded, her gaze snagging momentarily on the warm glow of the festival lights. It's just... It's been a long time since I've let anyone in like this. Hey, Lily said gently, placing a reassuring hand on Sophia's arm. You've got this, and you've got me, always. That's what he said, too. And Ethan is... Well, he's just wonderful. He's kind, 
and patient, and he makes me laugh like no one else can. Exactly, Lily exclaimed, throwing her hands up as if she'd just proven an irrefutable point. You deserve this, you know. After everything you've been through, the layoff, the breakup, it's time for you to find happiness again. Thank you, Sophia said softly, touched by her sister's genuine love and concern. But deep down, she couldn't shake the nagging worry that gnawed at her, even amidst all the warmth and joy of the festival. Hey, what's wrong? Lily asked, noticing the slight furrow in Sophia's brow. You're not having second thoughts about Ethan, are you? No, it's not that, Sophia admitted, taking a deep breath and gathering her thoughts. It's just, I want to take things slow with him. I don't want to rush into anything or mess this up because I didn't give myself enough time to heal and figure out who I am without someone else defining me, you know? Of course, Lily nodded, her expression softening with understanding. It's important to feel whole on your own, too, so take your time. Just remember that Ethan is a good man. He'll be patient and wait for you if that's what you need. Sophia smiled, grateful for her younger sister's wisdom and encouragement. Thank you, Lil. You are wise beyond your years, you know it? Hey, that's what sisters are for, right? Lily replied with a wink, looping her arm through Sophia's as they continued their leisurely stroll toward the library that sat at the heart of Pine Haven. Finally, they reached it, a charming two-story brick building nestled between an old-fashioned barbershop and a quaint flower shop. The library's facade, adorned with ivy climbing its walls, called to mind the image of a secret garden hidden within the bustling town. Vibrant flower beds surrounded the entrance, welcoming visitors with their fragrant blooms. Here we are, Sophia murmured as they stepped through the heavy oak doors, instantly greeted by the familiar scent of aged paper and polished wood. Ah, Sophia! A voice rang out from behind the large circulation desk, catching their attention. And Lily, what a pleasure to see you both. Miss Lena shuffled towards them with surprising speed for someone her age. Her thinning gray hair was pulled back in a messy bun, and her oversized glasses perched precariously on the tip of her nose, threatening to fall at any moment. Hello, Miss Lena, Sophia greeted with a warm smile. I hope you don't mind me bringing a guest. I just figured Lily has as much a right to this information as I do. Think nothing of it, dear. Miss Lena waved off the thanks with a flutter of her hand, her bony wrist adorned with an eclectic mix of beaded bracelets. Now follow me. I believe I have just the resources you need. As they trailed behind Miss Lena through the maze of towering bookshelves, Sophia couldn't help but marvel at the vast repository of knowledge that surrounded her. In this sacred space, the weight of countless stories and histories seemed to hum beneath her fingertips, whispering secrets in every dusty corner. Here we are, Miss Lena announced, stopping before a row of leather-bound volumes labeled Town Archives. She reached for one of the larger tomes, struggling slightly under its hefty weight before handing it over to Sophia. This should contain everything we need. Town records, newspaper clippings, personal accounts, the works. Sophia accepted the book with reverence feeling the gravity of the information it held within its pages. As she opened the cover, she caught a glimpse of her own reflection in Miss Lena's glasses, a woman on the brink of uncovering vital pieces of her family's past. She and Lily began to flip through the pages while Miss Lena went to gather some other documents, and before they knew it, they were buried in old papers. Ah, here we are. Miss Lena said, pulling out a yellowed newspaper clipping from one of the many folders she had spread across the table. She handed it to Sophia with a wink. This should pique your interest. Sophia studied the article, her eyes widening as she read the bold headline. Local businessman accuses Matthew's family of fraud. The piece detailed how Jeremiah Caldwell, the grandfather of Mayor Caldwell, had publicly accused Sophia's family of swindling funds from the town treasury. Jeremiah was quite the character, you see, Miss Lena explained, her voice low and conspiratorial. Always looking for ways to boost his own reputation, even at the expense of others. He spread rumors all around town about your great-grandfather, practically turning everyone against him. Is there any truth to these accusations? Lily asked, her brow furrowing in concern. 
None whatsoever, Miss Lena replied dismissively, waving her hand as if swatting away an annoying fly. Just another case of Caldwell bravado, trying to make themselves seem more important than they really are. I can't believe it. Well, there's more. With a theatrical flourish, she produced a magnifying glass from her pocket, holding it up to her eye and squinting through it. You see, I don't just have an eye for detail. I have two, she declared, letting out a cackle that had both Sophia and Lily chuckling along. Let's see, Miss Lena continued, scanning the documents with her trusty magnifying glass. Ah, here's something interesting. A letter from the town council, dated around the same time as the newspaper article. It seems they conducted an investigation into your great-grandfather's finances and found no evidence of wrongdoing. Oh, thank goodness. Sophia felt a surge of relief, tempered by frustration at the damage Jeremiah's lies had caused her family. Indeed, Miss Lena confirmed, handing over the letter. Unfortunately, it seems the truth wasn't enough to undo the harm caused by the rumors. But at least you can take solace in knowing your family's good name was never truly tarnished. Miss Lena had been right. The Caldwell's arrogance had left a trail of clues, as long as you knew where to look. And here, she said, sliding a newspaper article across the table. This discusses the mysterious fire that destroyed half of Main Street back in 1952. The Caldwells used it as an excuse to seize control of prime real estate to build some of their business properties. Sophia's eyes narrowed as she scanned the article. It says the cause of the fire was never determined. Convenient, don't you think? Very, Lena said darkly. Rumor has it the Caldwells paid off the fire chief to report it as an accident, even though the blaze was seen starting in multiple places along Main Street. Arson, Sophia said, to force business owners to sell at a loss so the Caldwells could expand their empire. She shook her head in disgust. They've been corrupt from the start. Oh, it goes back further than that, dear, Lena said. But this is a good piece of evidence. We'll need irrefutable proof of their misdeeds if we want justice to be served. Thank you, Miss Lena, Sophia said sincerely, touched by the older woman's support. Think nothing of it, dear, Miss Lena replied, her eyes twinkling behind her glasses. Just remember, the truth has a funny way of coming out, one way or another. And when it does, this town will rally behind you. With that thought bolstering her spirits, Sophia prepared to get back home and start working on an airtight case to put Mayor Caldwell in his place. As they stepped out of the library, they felt the crisp autumn air on their faces, carrying with it the scent of freshly fallen leaves. The late afternoon sun painted a golden hue over the picturesque town square, but neither sister could fully appreciate the beauty as the weight of their newfound evidence clouded their thoughts. Can you believe it? Lily whispered her eyes wide with disbelief as she clutched the documents tightly in her hands. The Caldwells. I mean, we always knew they were up to no good, but this is something else. Sophia nodded, her jaw set with determination and frustration. It's maddening how they've manipulated people for so long, but now we have proof, Lil. We can finally clear our family's name and regain our rightful ownership of the coffee shop. Are you scared? Lily asked softly, seeking reassurance from her older sister. Terrified, Sophia admitted, her green eyes glistening with unshed tears. But I won't let that stop me. Our parents deserve justice, Ethan's family too, and probably many others. That's right they do, Lily said fiercely, her grip on the papers tightening even more. We'll face this together, Soph. You know I'm here for you no matter what. Thank you. I don't know what I'd do without you. As they walked down the cobblestone streets, passing by colorful storefronts and friendly townsfolk waving hello, the sisters couldn't help but wonder how the revelation of the Caldwell family's deceit would shake the very foundations of their tight-knit community. Get ready, Mayor Caldwell, Sophia whispered under her breath, her eyes narrowing with steely determination. The truth is coming, whether you like it or not. Chapter 14 Sophia stood by the entrance of the old playground, her long, curly brown hair bouncing with excitement as she waited for Ethan to arrive. 
It was exactly as she remembered it. The creaky swings, the faded hopscotch squares on the blacktop, the big oak tree they used to climb. She smiled as Ethan parked the truck. Hey, stranger. Ethan greeted her with that charming smile of his as he approached the park's entrance. His dark hair was tousled from the wind, and there was an inviting warmth in his eyes as he playfully asked, What brings you here? Surprise! Sophia exclaimed, barely able to contain her enthusiasm. I thought we could spend the day revisiting some of our favorite places from high school. A trip down memory lane, if you will. For what occasion? Just to say thank you for everything you've done, the coffee shop and now the apartment. Plus, you've welcomed me back to Pine Haven and made me feel right at home again, so I thought I'd plan a fun day for us, starting here at the park. Ethan grinned, his dark eyes crinkling at the corners. I love it, though I don't know if I can still fit through that tire swing. They climbed out of the truck and headed toward the playground. Sophia's heart fluttered as Ethan reached for her hand. His palm was rough and warm against hers. Hey, remember when we used to race each other to the swings? Sophia asked, her eyes sparkling with mischief. Of course, I'd always let you win, Ethan teased, his voice laced with warmth and affection. Let me win? Pfft, hardly. Sophia shot back playfully, nudging him with her elbow. I beat you fair and square every time. All right, all right, he laughed, holding up his hands in surrender. You were definitely the faster one. They shared a prolonged glance, and Sophia felt a familiar fluttering in her stomach. It had been years since she had felt this way around Ethan, but it seemed like their connection hadn't faded in the slightest. Come on, she said, grabbing his hand and pulling him towards the swings. Let's see if you can keep up now. They raced each other, their laughter cutting through the crisp autumn air. As they reached the swings, Sophia's heart pounded in her chest, not only from the exertion, but from the sheer joy of being with Ethan again. At the swings, Ethan gave her a playful push. Bet I can still go higher than you. Sophia pumped her legs. In your dreams, Carter. Their laughter echoed across the empty playground. For a moment, Sophia felt 17 again, light and free, and falling for the boy on the swing beside her. Afterward, they walked to Lou's diner for milkshakes and cheese fries. Sophia slid into their old booth by the window. Strawberry, right? Ethan asked, heading for the counter. You know it. She watched him chat with Lou, the white-haired owner. Some things never changed. Ethan returned with two tall shakes. I don't know if I can finish this by myself, he said with a wink. Sophia grinned and stole a sip of his chocolate. We'll just have to help each other out. They traded their straws and drank in companionable silence. It was moments like these that she had missed most. The little quirks and details, the warmth of his hand on hers, the way he always remembered her favorite milkshake flavor. No matter what happened with the Caldwell family's scandal, Sophia knew that she would always remember these moments with Ethan. Their next destination was the old movie theater downtown. Its marquee had seen better days, but the charm of the small town cinema was still intact. Wow, Ethan said as they entered the dimly lit lobby. Feels like stepping back in time. Right? I couldn't resist including it on our trip down memory lane, Sophia replied, her green eyes gleaming with excitement. They settled into their seats, holding hands as the lights dimmed and the projector flickered to life. As a classic film played on the screen, their fingers intertwined and nothing else mattered but their stolen glances at each other and shared whispered comments, just like the old days. After the movie, they walked out of the theater with Ethan's arm around Sophia's waist. She leaned into him, enjoying the warmth of his embrace. That was amazing, Ethan said, a smile on his face. I forgot how much I loved that movie. It was pretty great, Sophia agreed feeling a sense of contentment that she hadn't experienced in a long time. But not as great as the company. I'm glad we came. They walked in comfortable silence for a few blocks, enjoying the cool evening breeze and the sound of their footsteps on the pavement. As they turned down a familiar side street, Sophia felt Ethan's grip on her waist tighten. I'm not sure I'm ready to call it a night just yet. Then don't, 
let's head back to the park for a bit. As twilight approached, they found themselves under the familiar shelter of the high school bleachers, a place where they had shared countless stolen kisses back in the day. The air was thick with anticipation as they stood mere inches apart, their breaths mingling in the cool evening breeze. Here we are again, Sophia whispered, her heart racing in her chest, just like old times. Only better, Ethan murmured, his hand grazing her waist ever so lightly. Their lips hovered tantalizingly close, their eyes locked as they stood stone still in a passionate embrace. Just as they were about to bridge the gap between them, a football came careening out of nowhere, hitting Ethan's shoulder with a solid thud. Whoa! he exclaimed, rubbing his shoulder and looking around for the source. Sophia's heart was pounding. The intimate moment shattered. She too glanced around in confusion. Are you okay? she asked, concern lacing her voice. Yeah, I'm fine, Ethan reassured her, still rubbing his shoulder. That football came out of nowhere. Seems like we can never catch a break, huh? She sighed, a wistful smile playing on her lips. Maybe not, he agreed, a hint of longing in his eyes. Ethan picked up the football, his hand brushing over the laces as he spotted the high school player a few feet away. With a confident flick of his wrist, he sent the ball spiraling back towards the teenager who caught it with a cocky smirk. Nice arm, the player called out, sauntering over to them. You two are quite the pair, aren't you? I've heard some interesting things about you two. Sophia's brows furrowed. Her curiosity peaked, while Ethan remained unflinchingly poised, his eyes locked onto the smirking teen. The park was filled with the sound of distant laughter and the rustle of leaves, but for a moment, all Sophia could hear was the pounding of her own heart. What do you mean? Ethan asked, his voice steady even as Sophia's mind raced with questions. Ah, just some juicy gossip, the player said, tossing the football in the air and catching it with exaggerated flair. Something about secret rendezvous and broken hearts, feuding families, theft, you know. Rumors have a way of getting twisted, Sophia interjected her voice betraying a hint of defensiveness. She tried to read the boy's face, searching for any signs of sincerity or cruelty. Surely this kid didn't know anything about the Caldwell scandal, did he? Maybe so, the player shrugged. But people around here love a good scandal, don't they? Sometimes they love it more than the truth, Ethan replied, his jaw tightening as he clenched his fists at his side. Their small town thrived on gossip, but this felt different. More personal, more intimate. Anyway, have a great evening, lovebirds, the player said, a mischievous gleam in his eye. Try not to cause too much trouble under those bleachers. And with that, he jogged off, leaving Sophia and Ethan standing in a cloud of confusion and frustration. Who was that? Sophia asked, still processing the encounter as her green eyes followed the retreating figure of the football player. I'm not sure, Ethan admitted, but it doesn't matter. Let's not let some high school kid ruin our night. She knew he was right. They should just let it go. But what if the kid really did know something? There was only one person who would care to stir anything up now, and it would mean bad news. Because if Mayor Caldwell had somehow caught on to her little investigation into his past, he would do anything it took to stop her from dragging him and his family's secrets out into the open. Chapter 15 Sophia expertly swirled the steaming milk in a stainless steel frothing pitcher, her eyes locked on the glossy white liquid as it thickened and doubled in volume. The aroma of freshly ground espresso beans filled the air, a scent that had become both familiar and comforting since her return to Pine Haven. With a satisfying hiss, the steam wand fell silent, and Sophia poured the velvety foam over a double shot of espresso, finishing the latte with an impressive Rosetta design. Order up, she called to Maggie, who was busy chatting with a pair of young mothers at the counter. They were dressed in trendy athleisure wear, their strollers parked beside them, casting furtive glances toward Sophia as they whispered conspiratorially. Is it true? One of them asked Maggie, her eyebrows raised inquisitively. True? Is what true? Sophia interjected, her curiosity piqued by their hushed exchange. 
The women looked mortified that Sophia had caught wind of their conversation. Oh, um, well, the other mother stammered, her cheeks flushed pink with embarrassment. There are these rumors going around town about your family and this coffee shop. What kind of rumors? Sophia pressed, her brow furrowing with concern. Apparently, the first woman began cautiously. People are saying that the Matthews family didn't actually own the land when they built the shop, that it was all done illegally, and the truth only came out when you guys pulled permits for the remodel. Which looks great, by the way, the second woman chimed in, attempting to lighten the mood. I mean, I love the new seating area, and those pendant lights are just to die for. Thanks, Sophia replied absently, her mind reeling from the allegations. Rumors? There was only one person she thought could be starting rumors like that. Mayor Caldwell must have caught word about their investigation into his past scandals, and now he was turning the negative attention back toward her. She had to give him credit. It was smart to get out in front of it and paint the Matthews family as the bad guys in all of the town's eyes before they released the truth about him and his own family. Outrage bubbled up inside Sophia like the steaming foam on the latte she had been making. She whipped out her phone and tapped a quick message to Lily. Rumors swirling about our family. Apparently we built the coffee shop on stolen land? Seriously? Maggie said, shaking her head as she handed the young moms their drinks. People will say anything to stir up drama in this town. Sophia glanced out the front window of the coffee shop, her eyes narrowing as she spotted Mayor Caldwell directing a group of workers setting up decorations for the Harvest Festival. The bright colors of the fall-themed banners only served to fuel her anger. Ugh, look at him, acting like he owns the place. Sophia ground her teeth together, unable to tear her gaze away from the mayor's smug expression. Hey. Maggie chided playfully. Don't let him ruin your day. We've got customers to serve, remember? Besides, even if these rumors are true, it's not like they can just bulldoze the place overnight. Sophia's phone buzzed with a reply from Lily. On my way. Fine, Sophia muttered, forcing herself to turn away from the window. She went back to work, pouring another latte with a practiced hand, but her thoughts were consumed by the accusations against her family. Where's Lily? She wondered aloud several minutes later. She should have arrived by now. Stealing another glance through the window, she found her sister already outside, engaged in a heated conversation with Mayor Caldwell. Well, that was fast. Whoa! Maggie exclaimed, craning her neck to see what Sophia was looking at. Talk about confronting the issue head on. Knowing Lily, she probably sprinted here? Sophia mused, admiring her sister's fierce determination. But as she watched Lily and the mayor continue their verbal sparring match, a gnawing worry settled in her stomach. Let's just hope this doesn't make things worse, she murmured, feeling the weight of uncertainty settling over the coffee shop like a dense fog. Lily marched into the coffee shop a few moments later, Mayor Caldwell following closely behind her. The bell above the door jingled noisily, announcing their arrival. Sophia looked up from the espresso machine and felt her heart race as she saw the mayor's stern expression. Miss Matthews, he said, his voice cold and formal. I must speak with you immediately. The guests in the coffee shop whispered among themselves, their eyes darting between Sophia and the mayor. She could feel the heat creeping up her neck as all eyes turned to her. Of course, Mayor Caldwell, Sophia replied, her voice wavering slightly. She wiped her hands on a nearby towel and approached him, trying to exude a confidence that she didn't entirely feel. Your sister here has been making quite a scene, the mayor began, gesturing towards Lily. And I think it's time we address these records about your family's land. He spoke loudly, purposely allowing his voice to carry so that all of her patrons would hear his lies. What a snake. Yes, mayor. Let's discuss these falsified records. Anger flashed in his eyes as he directed her toward the back of the shop, suddenly more eager to keep the conversation private. We know the truth. Sophia feigned confidence, but her cheeks burned under his piercing gaze. And any inaccurate records out there are a result of your family's dirty work. This land and this shop are ours, and you know it. 
Cut the act, Miss Matthews, Mayor Caldwell snapped. If you don't back off from these accusations, I'll have no choice but to shut down this coffee shop. Do you know the consequences of such an action? The loss of your family's livelihood? The reputation of your family in this town? Sophia stood her ground, refusing to cower to his threats. We're not intimidated by your scare tactics, Mayor. We won't let you silence us. It's time the truth came out about your family's shady dealings. You don't know what you're getting yourself into, he warned, leaning in close to her face. You have no idea the kind of power I wield in this town. If I wanted to, I could make your life a living hell. I'm not afraid of you, Sophia spat, her eyes blazing with anger. I won't back down until justice is served, and if that means exposing your family's corruption, then so be it. Mayor Caldwell's expression twisted into a snarl, and Sophia braced herself for his next move. But instead of lashing out, he straightened his suit and took a step back, his face a mask of icy composure. Fine, he said through gritted teeth. Have it your way, but mark my words, Miss Matthews. You'll regret crossing me. With that, the mayor turned on his heel and stormed out of the coffee shop, his parting words hanging heavily in the air. Sophia let out a sigh of relief as the tension in the room dissipated. She turned to face the small crowd of customers, her heart racing at the thought of how close she had come to losing everything. I, I'm sorry about that, everyone, she said, her voice shaking slightly. But I promise you, we won't let anyone intimidate us or shut us down. This coffee shop is a part of our family, and we'll fight tooth and nail to protect it. The guests who had been eavesdropping on the conversation began to murmur amongst themselves, eyeing her and Lily with a mixture of awe and suspicion. Ignoring their stares, Sophia walked back to the counter, determined not to let the mayor's threats get to her. Well, she said briskly, clapping her hands together, that was exciting, wasn't it? Maggie let out a nervous laugh, her eyes darting around the shop. I can't believe he threatened to shut us down. He's just bluffing, Lily said, joining them. He knows we have the upper hand. Sophia nodded, forcing a smile. Yeah, we won't let him win. We'll fight back and expose his lies. But deep down, she couldn't shake the feeling of unease. The mayor was a powerful man, with connections and resources that could crush their family in a heartbeat. Was she willing to risk everything to take him down? As the guests in the coffee shop began to disperse, Sophia leaned against the counter and closed her eyes, taking a deep breath to calm her racing heart. She knew that the road ahead would be long and fraught with danger, but she was determined to see it through to the end. Chapter 16 The scent of caramel apples and kettle corn wafted through the town square, accompanied by the faint sounds of acoustic guitars and laughter. The harvest festival was in full swing, with colorful fall leaves swirling around Sophia's feet and warm notes of cinnamon-spiced apple cider wafting through the air. She inhaled deeply, savoring the comforting aroma that brought back fond memories of her youth. Hey, careful! Ethan called out with a light-hearted grin as he gently nudged her elbow, guiding her away from an oncoming horde of eager children racing toward the candy stand. Thanks, Sophia replied, a sheepish smile playing on her lips. I guess I got a little lost in thought. Understandable, Ethan said, his dark eyes twinkling with amusement. This place does have a way of bringing back memories. Sophia nodded. It certainly does. She gazed at the bustling crowd, a mix of anticipation and uncertainty settling in her stomach. She knew that Ethan's parents would be arriving at any moment, and despite their history, she couldn't shake the feeling that this meeting held more weight than ever before. Speaking of memories, Ethan began, shifting his weight nervously. My parents should be here soon. Just then, a dark blue sedan pulled up to the curb, and Sophia's heart skipped a beat. As the doors opened, a middle-aged couple stepped out, their faces filled with excitement and curiosity. Ethan's father, Charles, had aged gracefully his silver hair giving him a distinguished look, while his mother, Evelyn, still radiated a youthful exuberance that defied her years. Mom, Dad, Ethan called out, embracing them warmly. 
I'm so glad you could make it. Of course, we wouldn't miss it, Evelyn exclaimed, her eyes scanning the crowd before locking onto Sophia. Oh my, is that... Hello, Mrs. Carter, Sophia said, trying to sound confident despite her quivering nerves. Please call me Evelyn, she replied with a genuine smile. It's been far too long. Hi, Mr. Carter, Sophia added, nodding toward Charles. Nice to see you again, Sophia, he responded, his tone polite but guarded. Ethan shifted his weight, sensing the tension in the air. Well, I guess reintroductions are in order. He placed a reassuring hand on Sophia's shoulder. Mom, Dad, you remember Sophia Matthews. We've recently reconnected and, well, things have been going really well for us. Indeed, Evelyn said, her gaze darting between Sophia and Ethan. You two always had a special connection, even back in high school. Right, Charles interjected, his voice a bit more curt than his wife's. And from what Ethan has told us, you've been through quite a lot since then. Unfortunately, yes, Sophia admitted, feeling the weight of her past heartbreaks and failures press down on her shoulders. But I'm grateful for the chance to start fresh here, in Pine Haven. Let's hope so. Charles said cryptically, leaving Sophia wondering whether she'd ever truly be able to escape her troubled past. Ethan glanced at his parents, a comforting smile playing on his lips. But enough about the past, he said with a lighthearted tone that eased the tension in the air. Let's enjoy this beautiful evening and explore all this wonderful festival has to offer. The four of them began to wander through the town square, taking in all of the sights and sounds of the harvest festival. They stopped by a petting zoo filled with fuzzy rabbits and lively goats, ooing and ahhing over each animal they encountered. They sampled fresh-pressed apple cider from local farms, accompanied by piping hot slices of warm apple pie, homemade buttery shortbread cookies, and freshly caramelized popcorn. As they walked hand in hand, Sophia felt her heart fill with warmth as she realized that this was more than just another festival. It was an opportunity for her to form new memories with Ethan and his family. Just then, a loud voice broke the peaceful atmosphere, and Sophia's heart sank as she heard the familiar tones of Mayor Caldwell. He was making his rounds, shaking hands with festival goers, and flashing his trademark smile for all to see. Sophia's stomach turned at the sight of him. Well, if it isn't the Carter family... Mayor Caldwell stepped out from behind a nearby booth, beaming with faux enthusiasm. He shook hands with Charles and Evelyn before turning to Sophia and Ethan, his lips twitching into an insincere smile. I heard you would be back in town tonight, he continued, flashing Sophia a sinister look. I figured it would only be a matter of time, with all the rumors floating around. Rumors? Evelyn glanced first at her husband, then at Ethan for some kind of explanation, but Caldwell kept right on. Miss Matthews didn't tell you? It seems some new documents turned up while your son was remodeling the coffee shop for her, and that land it sits upon seems like it could, in fact, belong to your family. He raised his brows. What are you talking about? Charles demanded. Come on down to the city hall on Monday, and I can show you what we've turned up. Let's just say it could be very lucrative for you. He winked. Well, I must really get on and greet the rest of the town. Please enjoy your evening and we'll chat soon, Charles. As soon as Caldwell left, Sophia's anger boiled up inside her. She knew he was playing dirty, but she never expected him to go this far. What's going on? Evelyn asked, her voice shaking with confusion. Sophia took a deep breath, trying to keep her composure. Mayor Caldwell is trying to scare us, that's all? Scare us how? Charles demanded, his eyes narrowing. He's claiming that our coffee shop sits on land that belongs to your family, Sophia explained, forcing a smile. It's just a ploy to try and get us to back down from an investigation into his family's past. Ethan's grip on her hand tightened, and Sophia felt a surge of gratitude. She knew that she could count on him to stand by her side, no matter what. It's ridiculous, he said, his voice filled with conviction. We have documents to prove that the Caldwells have been manipulating this town and toying with its families for decades. Real dirty stuff. And he knows what we've found. 
So now he's trying to stir up drama between us and intimidate Sophia into backing down. Well, it's not working, Charles said with a tight grin. I think we all know that this town has been more or less taken hostage by that man and his greedy family. And I, for one, would love to see him finally pay for his crimes. He paused for a moment before continuing. But I can't say that I'm surprised that this is his next move. He knows that Sophia is on to him, and he's hoping that she'll be too scared to follow through with her plans. Sophia nodded, her mind racing with all the possibilities. I've been thinking about it, and I know how this town could really benefit from change. But I want to do it the right way. Her eyes burned with determination. And I think tonight is the night, but first we have to find Miss Lena. Chapter 17 Sophia stood in the warm glow of the Harvest Festival, her heart pounding with determination. She glanced over at Ethan, his dark hair illuminated by the twinkling fairy lights that adorned the town square. He looked strong and capable, just like she remembered from their high school days. Are you ready to confront Mayor Caldwell? Ethan asked, his voice steady and reassuring. More than ready, she replied, her green eyes flashing with resolve. We've been waiting for this moment too long. I know Miss Lena has been gathering evidence to help us, so we need to find her first. Right, Ethan agreed, nodding towards a group of townspeople near the apple cider stand. I think I saw her talking to the Andersons earlier. Let's go. As they wove through the crowd, Sophia's mind raced with thoughts of her family's future, her father's secrets, and the Matthews name that had been tarnished by Mayor Caldwell's manipulations. The faint scent of cinnamon and pumpkin filled the air, but Sophia barely noticed as her focus remained on their mission. Miss Lena, Sophia called out as they approached the frail elderly woman. Her sharp eyes darted toward them, recognizing their purposeful stride. Ah, Sophia, dear. Miss Lena greeted warmly, her voice quivering slightly. And Ethan, I was hoping you two would find me tonight. Miss Lena, we know you've been helping us gather evidence against Mayor Caldwell. Sophia said urgently. Do you have everything we need? Indeed, I do, the older woman replied, her eyes sparkling with mischief. I've spent quite some time digging through town records, and let's just say the Caldwells have a lot to answer for, and I'm not the only one who thinks so. She gestured to the group of families surrounding her, all nodding in agreement. They too had suffered at the hands of Mayor Caldwell, and their collective strength bolstered Sophia's resolve. Thank you, Miss Lena, Ethan said earnestly clasping her frail hand in his strong grip. We couldn't do this without you. Of course, dear, she replied with a warm smile. The truth will always come out eventually, especially in a small town like ours. Sophia took a deep breath, feeling the weight of responsibility on her shoulders. This was it. Their chance to expose the mayor's deceit and clear her family's name once and for all. With Ethan by her side and the support of the townspeople behind her, she felt an unexpected surge of confidence. Are you ready? Ethan asked, looking down at Sophia with unwavering support. Sophia took a deep breath, her pulse racing, and nodded. Let's do this. As they approached the center of the festival grounds, Mayor Caldwell stood atop a platform, his charismatic smile captivating the crowd as he regaled them with stories of the town's history. Excuse me, Mayor Caldwell, Sophia called out, her voice cutting through the mayor's honeyed words like a sharp knife. The crowd's attention shifted towards her, their curiosity piqued by the interruption. Ah, Miss Matthews, Mayor Caldwell exclaimed, feigning surprise. What can I do for you on this fine evening? Actually, sir, Ethan chimed in, stepping forward. We have something for you. Really? Mayor Caldwell raised an eyebrow, his piercing blue eyes narrowing ever so slightly. Well, please, do share. Miss Lena, frail but fierce, held up a folder stuffed with documents. Mayor Caldwell, we've been doing some digging, and it seems that you've been less than honest with our townspeople. A collective gasp echoed through the crowd, and whispers spread like wildfire. Mayor Caldwell's confident grin faltered for just a moment before returning full force. 
I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about, dear Miss Johnson. Allow us to refresh your memory, Sophia said, her heart pounding as she began to list off the evidence they had collected. Witness statements from families who have been hurt by your actions, documents proving shady land deals, and even a few receipts that don't quite add up. Care to explain? Ethan added, his tone as sharp as his gaze. Mayor Caldwell's smile never wavered, but the crowd could see the sweat beginning to beat at his temples. My dear friends, I assure you, these allegations are baseless. I've always had the best interests of our town in mind. Really? Miss Lena scoffed, her eyes gleaming with defiance. Then how do you explain this? She waved a particular document triumphantly above her head. The Matthews family has been wrongfully accused for years because of your schemes. Is that true, Mayor Caldwell? A voice called out from the crowd, followed by murmurs of agreement and demands for answers. Everyone, please, Mayor Caldwell implored, his facade beginning to crack. I can explain. Save it, Sophia said firmly, locking eyes with the mayor. We know the truth now, and so does everyone else. As the crowd's anger rose, Mayor Caldwell seemed to shrink before their very eyes. The once powerful figure appeared small and vulnerable on the platform, his lies exposed for all to see. Let's just hope, Ethan whispered into Sophia's ear, that justice prevails. Friends and neighbors, Sophia called out, her voice carrying over the din of the harvest festival. Please gather round. We have something important to share with you all. As the crowd began to close in, drawn by curiosity and anticipation, Ethan stood beside Sophia on the small stage. Their eyes met for a moment, and she could see the fire burning in his gaze, a testament to his unwavering support. Many of you know that my family and others in this town have suffered at the hands of Mayor Caldwell, Sophia began, her tone strong and confident. But tonight, we are here to expose the truth and seek justice. Justice! Someone echoed from the crowd, followed by a chorus of agreement. Thanks to Miss Lena and many others who have come forward, we've gathered witness statements and evidence proving Mayor Caldwell's corruption. Ethan held up the thick folder filled with documents, causing murmurs of shock and disbelief to ripple through the crowd. Mayor Caldwell has built his career on the backs of honest, hardworking people, like my father and Mr. Carter, Sophia continued, her eyes glistening with tears. It's time for us to stand together and demand change. Change! The crowd shouted, their voices rising in a crescendo as they chanted the word together. Let's send a message to Mayor Caldwell that we will not be silenced any longer, Ethan roared, pumping his fist in the air. The townspeople cheered wildly, their passion and determination palpable. But just as the energy reached its zenith, a hush fell over the crowd. Sophia noticed an elderly man making his way to the front, clutching an old, weathered document. As he handed it to Ethan, his voice trembled with emotion. I'm sorry, but I believe there's something you should see. Ethan unfolded the paper, his brow furrowing as he scanned its contents. Sophia tried to gauge his reaction, her heart hammering in her chest. According to this, Ethan said slowly, the land that the Matthews family and others have been fighting for technically does belong to my family, the Carters. The crowd gasped, and Sophia felt a cold wave of shock wash over her. In their quest for justice, how had they overlooked this major detail? Ethan's jaw clenched, but he managed a reassuring smile. Don't worry, we'll figure it out, he whispered. Together. But Sophia shook her head. She looked out into the crowd, and then back to Ethan. Despite his kindness and generosity, she knew what she had to do. No she said firmly. We put Mayor Caldwell in his place, and that was the goal. She paused for a moment, steeling herself before continuing. The land is yours, Ethan, Sophia said quietly, and I'm sure you'll do with it what's right, according to the law as it's intended. Ethan opened his mouth as if he wanted to say something, but instead he simply nodded in agreement. Sophia stepped away from him and the platform, her heart heavy with mixed emotions. She had done what was right, but it didn't make the outcome any easier to bear. 
Lily immediately jumped to her side as Sophia stepped back into the crowd, and together they made a solemn exit from the Harvest Festival grounds. The two sisters walked in silence for a few moments before Lily finally spoke up. That was really brave of you, she said softly, squeezing Sophia's arm. Sophia gave her a weak smile and nodded in acknowledgement. I'm glad we set things right for Pine Haven. Now I need to figure out how to set things right for myself. Chapter 18 Sophia and Lily's footsteps echoed through the empty hallway as they entered their childhood home, carrying with them the weight of the day's events. The usually vibrant wallpaper seemed dull, reflecting their somber mood. Sophia paused at the entrance, her deep green eyes filled with sorrow, while Lily bit her lip to hold back tears. Everything has changed, hasn't it? Lily's voice trembled as she looked around the familiar space. Sophia sighed, running her fingers through her long, curly brown hair. It feels like it. Can you believe all this chaos? I mean, what happened to our quiet little town? Lily asked, fiddling with a loose thread on her sweater. Sophia's shoulders slumped as she leaned against the doorframe. I know. And the worst part is, I feel responsible for it all. Responsible? Sophia, that's not fair to yourself, Lily said, stepping closer to her sister. Concern etched into her features. No, really. If I hadn't come back to Pine Haven, none of this would have happened, Sophia insisted, her voice firm. Maybe it's a sign, Lil. It might be time for me to leave again. Leave? Lily's eyes widened in disbelief. You can't be serious. What about everyone here? What about the coffee shop? Sometimes we have to make tough decisions, Lily, Sophia replied, her eyes betraying the pain she felt at the thought of leaving. I care about this town and everyone in it, but if my presence is causing more harm than good, then maybe it's best for me to go back to the city. Is that what you really want? Lily asked, desperation creeping into her voice as she grabbed Sophia's arm. Sophia hesitated before answering, her gaze drifting toward the window where the last rays of sunlight were fading. I don't know, Lily. I don't know what I want anymore. Lily's grip on her sister's arm tightened as she searched Sophia's eyes for any sign of doubt. Sophia, I'm begging you. Don't make any hasty decisions. You belong here with us. We need you more than ever now. Maybe. Let me think about it, Sophia whispered, her voice cracking under the weight of her emotions. Promise? Lily asked, her eyes pleading. Promise, Sophia replied, forcing a smile onto her face as her heart ached at the thought of leaving Pinehaven behind. She paced back and forth in the cozy living room, her fingers gently running along the spines of the books on the shelves that had been her refuge growing up. Her thoughts were racing, and she couldn't shake the feeling that she needed to escape from Pinehaven as fast as possible. Lily sat on the couch, her legs tucked under her, watching her sister's every move with concern. Girls, Helen called out from the kitchen, her petite figure framed by the warm glow of the room as she entered with a tray of steaming mugs of cocoa. I think it's time we sit down and talk about this. Mom, Sophia sighed, taking a mug from the tray and cradling it in her hands for comfort. I've made up my mind. I need to leave. Sit down, Sophia. Helen said gently but firmly, her brown eyes locking onto her daughter's green ones. She patted the seat next to her, waiting for Sophia to comply before continuing. Sweetheart, I understand that you're feeling overwhelmed by everything that's happened, but leaving Pine Haven isn't going to solve everything. You're needed here, more than ever. Sophia shifted in her seat, feeling the weight of her mother's words sink in. But what about the coffee shop? She asked her voice barely above a whisper. It doesn't even belong to us. What am I supposed to do here now? I look like a fool. Helen took a deep breath, reaching out to take Sophia's hand in hers. We'll figure something out, love. We can't let this town fall apart, and we can't let you leave without a fight. Sophia blinked back tears, feeling the warmth of her mother's hand as a sense of belonging washed over her. I don't want to fight. That land belongs to Ethan's family, 
and I don't even think I can face him after all of this. I don't know if I'm strong enough, she admitted. It seemed that her bad luck and failed attempts at a career had followed her straight from the city and into Pine Haven. History sure had a way of repeating itself. Helen squeezed her hand tightly. You are stronger than you think, Sophia. And you have your sister and me and the whole town behind you. We'll get through this together. Sophia nodded slowly, though she knew the fight was over. She'd done what she'd set out to do. The coffee shop was flourishing again. No matter who owned it, Mayor Caldwell was put in his place, and ownership of the land was rightfully restored. She had no doubt that Maggie would do a fine job of running the shop, and it was all in good hands with Ethan and his family having ownership. There was simply no need for her here anymore. She'd thought that coming home would help her find her purpose, but here she was, floundering again. Drama and life crises seemed to follow her around like a lost puppy lately. She needed a fresh start. The sound of the front door creaking open announced her father's return, and Sophia glanced up from her contemplation. Her father entered the room with an air of purpose, his salt and pepper hair slightly disheveled as if he'd been running his fingers through it in deep thought. He caught Sophia's eye and took a seat next to Helen, reaching for his wife's hand. I just got back from the festival and boy you girls sure got this little town worked up, he said with a small smile. So you heard the news then, about the coffee shop? Lily asked. I did, and I've been thinking, John said, his voice steady, yet filled with gentle determination. I know how important the coffee shop is to our family, but the Carters deserve to keep what is lawfully theirs. I'd offer to purchase it outright, but land values have soared in recent years, and frankly we just don't have the funds for that right now. So I propose we find a different solution that benefits both families. What do you have in mind? Sophia asked, curiosity coloring her tone. John cleared his throat, adjusting his glasses before meeting her gaze. Well, instead of fighting over the ownership of the coffee shop, we could lease it from Ethan's family. We'll keep the business running and both families will benefit from its success. Sophia chewed on her bottom lip, considering her father's proposal. Her green eyes flickered between her parents and Lily, who all watched her expectantly. It was true that the coffee shop meant a lot to her. It held some of her fondest memories growing up, but she couldn't shake the feeling that it might not be enough. Thank you, Dad, she said at last, her voice wavering with uncertainty. That's a great idea, and I'll be sure to run it by Maggie tomorrow. But as for me, I don't know if it's what I need right now. I'm grateful for your support, but sometimes, sometimes I wonder if a fresh start elsewhere might be best for me. Silence settled over the room, heavy with unsaid thoughts and emotions swirling between them. Sophia fiddled with the hem of her shirt, her heart racing as she awaited their reactions. Sweetheart, Helen began, her voice gentle and understanding. It's okay to be unsure, but remember, you're not alone in this. We're here to help you through whatever decision you make. Thanks, Mom, Sophia replied, the lump in her throat making it hard to speak. Your happiness is what matters most to us, John added, his tone resolute as he squeezed Helen's hand. If you need time to figure things out, we'll give you that. Just know that we're always here for you, no matter where life takes you. Sophia looked at her family, their love and support shining in their eyes and felt a surge of gratitude. While Pine Haven held a special place in her heart, she knew that she needed to find her own path. And with her family by her side, she was ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. With the quiet hum of determination, Sophia began to pack her things. She pulled out a large suitcase from underneath her bed and unzipped it, laying it open on the floor. Her long, curly brown hair fell over her face as she bent down, meticulously folding her clothes and placing them in neat stacks before sliding them into the suitcase. The process was therapeutic for her, even though she knew that her departure would be anything but. Wait, you're actually leaving Pinehaven? Lily burst into Sophia's room, her blue eyes wide with disbelief. Sis, come on! You can't just abandon everything here like that! Abandon is a strong word, Lily, 
Sophia replied, setting her jaw in determination. I've thought this through. I need to start fresh somewhere else, away from all the drama and chaos. Lily crossed her arms over her chest, her long blonde hair swaying as she shook her head. You know, just because things are tough right now doesn't mean you should give up so easily. Besides, what about the coffee shop? And Ethan? Leasing the coffee shop from the Carters might be the best solution for both families, and that's not giving up, Sophia reasoned, trying to maintain her composure. As for Ethan, well, he'll understand if I need to go. Is it really worth it? Lily pressed on, her voice cracking with emotion. To leave behind your family, your friends, and everything you've built here? Sometimes it's necessary, Lil, Sophia answered softly, her green eyes glistening with unshed tears. My life has been turned upside down, and I'm struggling to find my footing. Maybe being somewhere new will help me figure out who I am now. Or maybe it'll just leave you feeling more lost than ever, Lily countered, a pleading tone creeping into her voice. Please, Sophia. Don't let recent events drive you away from the people who love you most. Love works both ways, Lily, Sophia said, her voice barely above a whisper. I need to do this for myself, and I hope you can understand that. Lily frowned, crossing her arms over her chest. You're just running away because you're scared. Maybe I am, Sophia admitted, tucking a stray curl behind her ear. But isn't that what everyone does sometimes? We run when we're scared, hoping to find something better on the other side. That's all I'm trying to do. Is there really nothing I can say to change your mind? Lily asked, her eyes pleading with her older sister. Nothing you haven't already said, Sophia responded, her voice gentle. I've made my decision, Lil. I need to do this for myself. Fine, Lily huffed, tears welling in her eyes. Just promise me one thing. Okay? Sophia looked up at her sister, curiosity shining in her green eyes. What's that? Promise me that you'll be happy wherever you go, that you'll find what you're looking for and come back to visit us. Sophia smiled softly, feeling a mix of sadness and gratitude for her sister's support. I promise, she said, sealing the vow with a nod. Sophia closed her eyes allowing a tear to roll down her cheek. She knew leaving Pine Haven wouldn't be easy, but it was a decision she had to make for her own well-being, and as much as she longed for the comfort of the familiar, she couldn't deny the excitement of starting anew, her heart pounding with anticipation, even as she braced herself for the inevitable goodbyes. Chapter 19 Heart pounding, Sophia glanced at her phone for the tenth time, counting the missed calls from Ethan. Lily had spilled the beans about her plan to leave town, and now Ethan was trying to reach her in a desperate attempt to change her mind. Ugh, why can't he just let it go? She muttered under her breath, tucking a stray strand of hair behind her ear. She knew that the right thing to do was to answer his calls or at least listen to his voicemails, but she couldn't bring herself to do it. Instead, she focused on the task at hand, leaving instructions for Maggie, who would be taking over the coffee shop in her absence. As she approached the entrance, she took a deep breath, bracing herself for the conversation ahead. The bell above the door jingled merrily as she entered, a stark contrast to the turmoil bubbling inside her. Hey, Sophia, Maggie greeted her with a bright smile, her red hair bouncing as she waved. You're here early today. Hi, Maggie, Sophia replied, forcing a smile. I wanted to go over a few things with you before I, well, before I'm gone. Maggie's eyebrows knit together in concern. Is everything okay? You seem upset. Everything's fine, Sophia assured her, though her green eyes betrayed her unease. I'll explain later, but first, let's go through these notes I made for you. Sure thing, Maggie said, her curiosity piqued but respecting Sophia's boundaries. Just as they started reviewing the instructions, the door swung open once more, and Ethan's strong build and dark hair were instantly recognizable, even without the charming smile that usually accompanied them. Today, his expression was one of determination. Hey, Ethan, 
Maggie greeted him cheerfully, oblivious to the tension that filled the room. How's it going? Hey, Maggie, he replied, his eyes locked on Sophia. Sophia, we need to talk. Actually, Ethan, now's not a good time, she said, avoiding his gaze. I'm in the middle of something with Maggie. Fine, he replied, his voice tight. But I won't leave until we've talked. Okay, okay, Sophia conceded, her heart racing. Just give me a few minutes. She turned back to Maggie, trying and failing to focus on their conversation while Ethan silently watched. As they neared the end of the instructions, Maggie picked up her phone and gasped, her face turning pale. Sophia, did you see this? She asked, pointing to the screen. A closer look revealed the results of their crowdfunding project going haywire. The totals shown on the screen were beyond her wildest dreams, and they seemed to be increasing by the minute. How can this be? The truth was she'd forgotten all about Maggie's little project to raise funds for the coffee shop remodel. That seemed like it was a lifetime ago. Word gets around fast in Pinehaven, Maggie said with a grin. And everyone is cheering for you after that speech you gave last night. Turns out Caldwell had swindled more people than we knew. I can't believe it, Sophia said on a whisper. I can. This is what we've been trying to tell you, Soph. Ethan stood and placed his hand tenderly on the small of her back. We need you here. But it's not me that anyone needs. It was Maggie who spearheaded this whole crowdfunding project. The success belongs to her, Sophia insisted, pointing at the younger woman. She'll be running the coffee shop from now on anyway. Hey, don't sell yourself short, Maggie interjected, clearly uncomfortable with the sole credit. We did this together. Besides, Ethan added, his eyes pleading, you're as much a part of this town as any of us. You can make a home here, Sophia. Turning away from them, she stared at the light reflecting off of the familiar countertops. She couldn't help but think of all the recent failures and setbacks that had led her back to Pine Haven. Could she really put down roots again? Look, I appreciate your help, I do, she said softly. But I'm just not sure I'm capable of making this work. Of course you are, Ethan argued, frustration creeping into his voice. Just give it a chance, Sophia. Let me help you. Help me? She asked, incredulous. You know what happened the last time we tried to make something work. Her words hung in the air between them like a suffocating cloud. Ethan winced, clearly remembering their past. That was years ago, Soph. We've both grown since then. We tried going our own ways, and look how well that worked for us. I was an idiot to let you go. I should have chased you down that day. I would have stayed if you'd only asked. I was too afraid. I didn't want you to resent me for holding you back from your dreams in the city. But I'm not afraid to ask you to stay this time. Please don't let fear ruin our chance at happiness again. Sophia hesitated, feeling her heart tugging her in two directions. On one hand, she desperately wanted to believe Ethan's comforting words. Yet on the other, she couldn't shake the fear that kept resurfacing from her past. How could she trust anyone again after everything that had happened in her life recently? Look, Ethan, she finally said, her voice wavering. I'm scared. Scared that our relationship is doomed, that I'll end up hurt again. I don't know if I can do this. Trust me, he urged his eyes searching hers for any sign of hope. I won't let you down, not this time. As Sophia looked into Ethan's sincere gaze, she knew she had a difficult decision to make. But the lingering shadows of her past were hard to shake. All right, let me show you something, Ethan said, trying a different approach. He led her to the back of the shop and stopped at the wooden door, which had been refinished and looked as good as new. Sophia knew what lay on the other side. Here, he said, twisting the knob and gesturing toward the stairs leading up to the apartment. I've been working on this for a while now. It's perfect for you, and it's a fresh start. Sophia followed him up and stared at the beautiful space before her, her green eyes wide with surprise. The sun shone through the large windows, 
casting a warm glow over the hardwood floors and exposed brick walls. It was an inviting sanctuary away from the bustling town below. Consider it a solution to our problem, Ethan continued hopeful. A place where you can feel safe and in control. No more doubts, no more fears. Sophia felt a rush of gratitude towards Ethan, but also a pang of guilt as she realized what he was offering her. She shook her head slowly, refusing to accept his gift. Ethan, I can't take this. I don't deserve it. Of course you do. You're strong, resilient, and talented, he insisted passionately. You've just hit a rough patch, that's all. This is your chance to bounce back, Soph. Look, I appreciate the offer, Sophia replied, her voice barely above a whisper. But I can't accept it. My past mistakes, they keep pulling me down. I'm afraid to trust anyone, even you. Your past doesn't define who you are now, Ethan countered gently. You have every right to be cautious, but don't let it control your future. Don't let it stop you from living your life. Maybe you're right, Sophia conceded, her heart aching with uncertainty. But accepting this apartment feels like I'm taking advantage of you. I need to figure out things on my own. I can't keep relying on others to fix my life. Ethan's face fell, disappointment evident in his dark eyes. But he nodded slowly, understanding her need for independence. If that's what you want, Sophia, I'll respect your decision. Thank you she whispered, feeling both relieved and heartbroken at the same time. As they stood there, side by side yet worlds apart, the tension between them grew palpable. Both were grappling with their emotions, trying to reconcile the hope of a shared future with the pain of their pasts. Sophia took a deep breath, her green eyes shimmering with unshed tears. I think I've made things worse for everyone since coming back to Pine Haven, she admitted her voice trembling. Instead of helping, it feels like I've caused more harm than good. Ethan looked at her, his own emotions mirroring the pain in Sophia's eyes. You have no idea how much you've done for this community. You've given so many people hope and something to believe in. Maybe, Sophia replied hesitantly, unconvinced by his words. She sighed deeply, trying to gather her thoughts but I can't shake the feeling that things were better before I came back. Maybe, maybe I should return to the city, restore some semblance of normalcy for everyone here. Ethan stiffened, his heart clenching at the thought of her leaving Pine Haven. Sophia, he implored, you don't have to go. We can work through this together. I'm here for you. She offered him a sad smile appreciating his dedication, but knowing deep down that this decision was hers alone to make. I need to do this, Ethan, she explained, her resolve growing stronger by the minute. If I can make amends for my mistakes and find peace with my past, maybe then I can truly be happy and give my all to this town and our relationship. You really think leaving Pinehaven will fix everything? He challenged, his voice tight. She raised her chin defiantly green eyes meeting his dark gaze. I need to make things right, Ethan. I've made too many mistakes here. Everyone makes mistakes, Soph. Running away won't solve anything, he retorted, running a hand through his short, dark hair. Look, I know you're scared. I am too. But I believe in us, in what we can achieve together. Is that enough, though? She asked, biting her lip, her heart heavy with doubt. Maybe it has to be he replied, reaching out to gently touch her arm. The contact sent shivers down her spine, but she remained steadfast in her decision. Trust me when I say that sometimes, trying harder leads to even bigger disappointments, Sophia said, her voice strained. She thought about her previous job and past relationships, feeling the sting of failure all over again. Let me help you, Ethan pleaded, his eyes filled with sincerity. Let's face this together. The Sophia I know didn't give up easily. Maybe she doesn't exist anymore, Sophia murmured, her heart aching at the distance growing between them. Can you look me in the eyes and tell me that without any doubt? Ethan pressed, his voice gentle yet firm, conveying the depth of his feelings for her. 
Sophia hesitated, torn between her desire to stay and make things work and the fear that she'd only hurt Ethan and the town further. She could feel the tension building between them, the air thick with unspoken words and unresolved emotions. I can't, look, I'm sorry, but I've got to go. Please, wait. She ran down the stairs and through the coffee shop, never once stopping to look back. And she somehow made it all the way back into her old bedroom before the tears came streaming down. Chapter 20 Sophia stared at the battered suitcase lying open on her bed, her heart heavy with the weight of her decision. She couldn't shake the feeling that leaving Pine Haven was like ripping out a piece of her soul. Yet, she knew it was necessary if she wanted to find a place where she truly belonged, a place where she could establish roots and call home. Thoughts of Ethan tugged at her heart, making it even harder to leave him behind once again. Ugh, Sophia groaned, pushing the suitcase aside and flopping onto the bed, tears welling up in her eyes. A knock sounded at the door and she quickly wiped her face, clearing her throat. Swinging her legs off the bed, she went to answer it, finding Lily and Maggie standing on the other side with an assortment of Chinese takeout containers in their hands. Hey, sis, Lily said, stepping inside and placing the containers on her dresser. We thought you might need some company tonight. Make that company with food, Maggie chimed in, a mischievous grin on her face as she held up a carton of Kung Pao chicken. The best kind. Thanks, guys, Sophia replied, wiping a stray tear from her eye and managing a small smile. Let's dig in, Maggie announced, her cheerful tone lifting the mood in the room. She opened the various cardboard containers, revealing steaming piles of fried rice, sweet and sour pork, and colorful vegetable stir-fry. The aroma of soy sauce, garlic, and ginger filled the air, making it impossible for anyone to be anything but ravenous. Wow, you guys went all out. Of course, Lily agreed, grinning sadly at her older sister. It's not every day we get to have a farewell feast. True, Maggie added, fishing around in her purse for a pair of chopsticks. And just remember, Sophia, when you're feeling down in the dumps, there's nothing like a good old carb-loaded meal to cheer you up. Thanks, Maggie, Sophia replied, laughter bubbling up inside her despite the turmoil of emotions she was experiencing. I'll keep that in mind. As they settled down on the floor, forming a triangle around the containers of food, the three friends began to eat and chat about lighter topics. But it wasn't long before Lily and Maggie turned their attention back to Sophia's situation. Listen, Soph, Lily said gently, looking at her sister with a mix of concern and sadness in her eyes. We know how hard this is for you, especially with Ethan. Leaving him behind again must be so tough, added Maggie, her voice full of sympathy. Her body language mirrored her words as she leaned forward and placed a comforting hand on Sophia's arm. Sophia sighed and stared into her container of chicken, feeling tears prickling her eyes once more. Yeah, it is, she admitted quietly. But I just have to keep reminding myself that it's for the best. Of course, Lily agreed, her tone soft but adamant. And we want you to know that we respect your decision. As much as we'd love for you to stay here in Pine Haven, we won't try to convince you otherwise. Her facial expression was one of sincerity, eyebrows slightly raised and lips pressed together in a tight smile. It obviously pained her to let her sister go. Thank you, Lily, Sophia replied, touched by her support. That means a lot to me. Hey, Maggie chimed in, her tone suddenly lighter and more playful. You know what always makes me feel better when I'm down? Low mane. She held up a container of steaming noodles, wiggling it enticingly in front of Sophia's face. It's like the ultimate comfort food. Sophia couldn't help but chuckle at Maggie's enthusiasm, momentarily forgetting her heartache. Well, when you put it that way, how can I resist? Exactly, Maggie beamed, passing the container to Sophia. Plus, don't forget we've got that grand reopening party at the coffee shop tomorrow. You're not going to want to miss that, are you? Her voice was hopeful, clearly hinting that she wanted Sophia to attend. Sophia hesitated, her smile fading slightly as she considered the implications of staying in Pine Haven for another day. Her racing thoughts clouded with uncertainty. 
She bit her lip and glanced between Lily and Maggie. I don't know, guys. She started, her voice wavering. I mean, I really should be hitting the road first thing tomorrow. The sooner I leave, the sooner I can start building my new life somewhere else. Lily reached over and squeezed Sophia's hand reassuringly. We understand, Soph. But just think about it, okay? One more day won't make much difference in the grand scheme of things. And it might be nice to have one last hurrah with the people who care about you. You brought the coffee shop back to life, and we want to celebrate that. Sophia looked into Lily's eyes, seeing the love and support reflected there. With a deep breath, she nodded slowly. All right, she finally agreed, her tone softening. I'll stay for the party. But then, I really do have to go. Yay! Maggie clapped her hands together, beaming at Sophia. Trust me, it's going to be a blast. Thanks for giving it a chance, Soph. Of course, Sophia replied, managing a small smile. Great! I better head out and make sure everything is ready for tomorrow, Maggie said, hopping up from her seat. She gathered the empty takeout containers, humming cheerfully. I want this party to be perfect. We know you'll make it amazing, Maggie, Lily assured her, grinning. Thanks, Lil. All right, I'm off. See you two lovely ladies tomorrow, Maggie called over her shoulder as she headed for the door. Her red hair bounced with each step, reflecting her infectious energy. Bye, Maggie, Sophia and Lily chimed in unison, waving as their friend disappeared through the doorway. The room fell quiet for a moment, the laughter and chatter of the past hour leaving a warm afterglow. Sophia took a deep breath, contemplating her decision to stay one more day and savoring the camaraderie and love that Pinehaven had given her during her time here. She would miss it. Okay, she whispered to herself, bracing for the bittersweet emotions that were sure to come. One more day. First things first, Lily declared the next afternoon, rummaging through Sophia's closet. We need the perfect outfit. Sophia watched as Lily pulled out various dresses, holding them up to examine their potential. She wanted to be as excited about the evening as Lily was, but her stomach still ached with the bitter taste of goodbye. I still think this might have been a big mistake. What's a mistake? Staying another day? Nonsense, Lily exclaimed, pulling out a deep emerald green dress that accentuated Sophia's eyes. Sophia sighed and shook her head, feeling torn. Leaving is hard enough as it is, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. I don't know if I can handle one more night of goodbyes. Lily put her hands on her hips and gave Sophia a stern look. You can handle anything, Soph. You're stronger than you give yourself credit for. She held up the green dress again, wiggling it enticingly. And besides, you'll look amazing in this. It's perfect for the party. Sophia couldn't help but smile at her sister's enthusiasm. All right, fine, she relented. But only because you're so darn convincing. Lily grinned triumphantly and handed the dress to Sophia. That's what I like to hear. Now go get ready. We don't want to be late. Sophia and Lily arrived at the coffee shop 30 minutes later, already feeling a buzz of anticipation in the air. The streets were packed with people, and they had to park three blocks away due to all the traffic. As Sophia made her way along the sidewalk, she realized that this party was much bigger than she anticipated. All of Pine Haven had come out to celebrate the grand reopening. Old classmates, teachers, and even strangers were milling around and chatting excitedly. Sophia's heart started to race and butterflies fluttered in her stomach. She suddenly felt very unsure about coming tonight. What if she said something wrong? What if everyone hated her and wanted her gone? But before she could turn back around, Lily grabbed her hand and tugged her forward. Come on, Soph, she said with a smile. Everything is going to be great. Sophia nodded nervously, but followed along anyway, allowing the sea of faces to swallow them up. They worked their way through the crowd until they reached the front doors of the coffee shop. With one more deep breath, Sophia pulled on the handles trying to keep a smile on her face as she prepared to say her final farewells. Chapter 21 
the grand reopening party was in full swing, and the atmosphere was positively electric. Streamers and balloons adorned the walls of the coffee shop, while twinkling fairy lights hung from the ceiling, giving a sense of enchantment to the room. The number of attendees easily surpassed a hundred, maybe two hundred. It seemed as though the entire town had turned up to celebrate. Maggie had done an incredible job planning the event. Heart pounding with both excitement and anxiety, Sophia surveyed the bustling scene as discreetly as she could from a spot against the wall near the corner of the room while Lily ran off to chat with some people she knew. Laughter filled the air as old friends caught up with one another, and the live band played a lively set that made even the most reluctant dancers tap their feet. Congratulations, Sophia, called out Mrs. Turner, the elderly lady who ran the local bakery. She approached Sophia with open arms and enveloped her in a warm hug. You really showed Mayor Caldwell what's what. Thank you, Mrs. Turner, Sophia replied, beaming despite her nerves. It was a long time coming. As Mrs. Turner moved on, more and more people from around town approached Sophia. Some congratulated her on standing up to Mayor Caldwell, while others complimented the remodel of the coffee shop or expressed their happiness at having her back in town. Great job, Sophia, said Mr. Bradley, the burly owner of the hardware store. This place looks fantastic. Thanks, Mr. Bradley, Sophia responded, trying to keep her composure as the crowd around her grew. Welcome back to Pine Haven, dear, cooed Mrs. Henderson, the town librarian. We've missed you so much. Thank you, Mrs. Henderson, Sophia said, touched by the genuine warmth in the older woman's eyes. I've missed being here, too. As the well wishes continued, Sophia began to feel overwhelmed by the attention. She appreciated the support from the townsfolk, but the constant bombardment of conversation was beginning to take its toll. Her green eyes flitted around the room, seeking a brief moment of solace amid the chaos. Welcome home, Sophia, said a familiar voice. She turned to see Nancy Caldwell, wife of the mayor, her piercing blue eyes locked onto Sophia's with an intensity that made her heart race. The memories of the recent confrontation bubbled to the surface, and she couldn't help but feel a mixture of pride and trepidation at having challenged the woman's powerful husband. Thank you, Nancy, she replied, trying to maintain her composure. I'm glad to be back. Let's hope your return is a positive one for Pine Haven, she said, her tone unreadable. With those cryptic words, she disappeared into the crowd, leaving Sophia feeling both victorious and uneasy at the same time. As the party continued around her, Sophia realized how much she truly missed the small town charm and camaraderie of Pine Haven. But despite all the laughter and warmth that surrounded her, she couldn't shake the feeling that she didn't belong. It was at that moment Sophia spotted Miss Lena by the snack table, her frail frame barely visible in the sea of people. She made her way over to the elderly gossip, grateful for a chance to escape the chaos. Miss Lena, she said with a warm smile, I wanted to thank you again for your help with Mayor Caldwell. I couldn't have done it without you. Ah, my dear, it was my pleasure, Miss Lena responded, her eyes twinkling with mischief. It's about time someone put him in his place. And I noticed Mrs. Caldwell was here alone tonight. Looks like our dear mayor may have skipped town she added with a conspiratorial grin. Sophia laughed, feeling a sense of camaraderie with the sharp-tongued woman. As they chatted, she caught sight of Ethan's parents, Charles and Evelyn, across the room. Her heart skipped a beat, but she quickly looked away, not wanting to face the awkwardness that would surely follow an encounter with them. Are you all right, dear? Miss Lena asked, noticing Sophia's sudden unease. Uh, yes. Just a bit overwhelmed, I guess, she admitted, her gaze still avoiding Ethan's parents. Take a deep breath, child. You've faced much bigger challenges than a room full of well-wishers, Miss Lena advised, her reassuring tone making Sophia feel slightly more at ease. Taking a deep breath, Sophia moved through the crowd once more, walking past the live musicians that filled the room with a lively tune. The cheerful music only added to the whirlwind of emotions she was experiencing. As she continued to navigate her way around the bustling party, she had to wonder if coming tonight had been the right choice. Hey, Sophia, Maggie called out, 
her bright red hair standing out like a beacon among the crowd. The friendly barista seemed to instantly notice Sophia's discomfort and hurried over to her side. You look like you could use a breather. What do you say we sneak away for a bit and let you catch your bearings? Would that be all right? Sophia asked uncertainly, not wanting to seem ungrateful for the party thrown in her honor. Of course. I'd say you've more than earned a little respite, Maggie assured her with a wink. I promise everyone will still be here celebrating when you're ready to jump back in. With a grateful nod, Sophia followed Maggie through the throngs of people, eager for a temporary escape from the overwhelming emotions that threatened to swallow her whole. Here, Maggie said, handing Sophia a small key. This is for the apartment upstairs. Take all the time you need to just relax and regroup. I'll hold down the fort here. Thank you, Maggie. I really appreciate this, Sophia replied, her heart filled with gratitude. Anytime, hun, Maggie responded cheerfully, giving Sophia a quick hug before returning to her duties behind the counter. With the key in hand, Sophia made her way up the narrow staircase that led to the apartment above the family coffee shop. Her pulse pounded in her chest, and she could feel a light sheen of perspiration forming on her forehead. The anticipation of finding a quiet haven away from the chaos below brought a sense of relief that washed over her like a gentle breeze, but there was a whole new whirlwind of emotions waiting for her on the other side. Would she be able to get some peace alone without thinking of Ethan in that space? As she reached the top of the stairs, Sophia hesitated for a moment, taking one last look at the lively party going on beneath her. She knew they were all there for her, but it was still overwhelming. With a deep breath, she unlocked the door and stepped into the dimly lit apartment, silently closing the door behind her. Instantly, the noise from the party below seemed to fade away, replaced by a comforting silence that enveloped her like a warm blanket. She let out a sigh as she closed her eyes and leaned against the door. Sophia's eyes fluttered open a moment later as she took in the cozy apartment, her gaze landing on a man who was waiting alone by the window. Ethan. His strong build and short dark hair were highlighted by the flickering candlelight scattered around the room. Sophia's heart skipped a beat, but she couldn't help the small smile that formed on her lips, surprising even herself. The space was transformed with candles casting a warm, inviting glow, and her favorite things were carefully arranged throughout the room, from the bouquet of wildflowers on the coffee table to the comfortable throw blanket draped across the couch. The scent of vanilla and lavender wafted through the air, creating a soothing atmosphere that made Sophia's tense shoulders relax ever so slightly. She could still hear the faint sound of laughter and music from the party downstairs, yet it felt like a world away. Both Sophia and Ethan seemed to hold their breaths, cherishing the serenity of this moment amidst the chaos. Ethan turned to face her, his warm brown eyes filled with emotion. He took a deep breath before speaking his voice soft and sincere. Sophia, I need to apologize for ever contributing to you feeling unwanted in Pinehaven. You've always been such a vital part of this town and my life. He paused, searching her eyes as memories of their youth flashed in both of their minds. Stolen glances in the school hallways, whispered conversations under the stars, and shared dreams of a future together, a future that never came to fruition. Truth is, he continued, I've always wanted you. You're all I've ever wanted, and I should have said so many years ago when you first asked. His hands trembled as he fought to keep his emotions in check. I let fear and pride stand in the way of what my heart knew was right. And I'm sorry. So incredibly sorry. The thought of you leaving again kills me, if I'm being honest. Your return to Pine Haven firmed up something that I think I've known all along but was too cowardly to admit. Her breath hitched as he stood a nervous step forward, lifting his hand as though he wanted to touch her, then letting it fall back to his side. Sophia Matthews, I love you. And I think I've loved you my whole life. His grand declaration hung in the air, heavy with the weight of years of unspoken feelings and missed opportunities. Sophia stared at him, her green eyes shimmering with unshed tears. She felt a myriad of emotions, surprise, joy, fear, but most of all, a renewed sense of belonging that she hadn't realized she was missing. Ethan reached out to take her hands, 
his fingertips brushing against her skin, sending shivers down her spine. The connection between them was undeniable, as if they were two pieces of a puzzle finally fitting together. Let's not waste another moment, he said, his voice filled with conviction. He took a deep breath and dropped to one knee, reaching into his pocket to produce a small velvet box. As he opened it, revealing an exquisite ring, Sophia gasped. The ring was a perfect symbol of their shared history, a delicate gold band with a beautifully crafted heart-shaped emerald. It was surrounded by a halo of tiny diamonds that sparkled like the stars they used to gaze at together. The green of the emerald matched the deep, soulful hue of her eyes, as if it was made just for her. Will you do me the honor of becoming my wife? Ethan asked, his voice slightly shaky but filled with love. Sophia stared at him, her heart pounding in her chest. She felt as if time had stopped, the sounds of the party below fading into the background. She could see the sincerity in his eyes, feel the warmth of his touch, and hear the vulnerability in his voice. Is this really happening? She whispered, her voice cracking with emotion. Only if you say yes, Ethan replied gently, his eyes never leaving hers. Her mind raced as she considered their past, the pain they had both experienced, and the undeniable love that still burned between them. She thought about the life they could build together, the family they could create, and the happiness they both deserved. He said he'd loved her his whole life, and something about that felt so right, so obvious, like she should have seen it all along. Those feelings she's always had when he was near. Love. Love so much greater than she'd ever felt with Michael. How could she not have seen it for what it was? With tears streaming down her face, Sophia finally spoke. Yes, she said softly, her voice full of awe and gratitude. Yes, I will marry you, Ethan Carter. A beaming smile spread across Ethan's face as he slid the ring onto her finger, sealing their future together. They embraced, laughter and tears mingling together, while the sound of the party continued below, unaware of the life-changing moment unfolding above them. Chapter 22 Sophia's heels clicked down the narrow stairwell, the sound echoing off the walls. With each step, her heart pounded faster. Ethan squeezed her hand, shooting her a grin that crinkled the corners of his warm brown eyes. You ready for this? He asked. Sophia nodded, butterflies swirling in her stomach. She couldn't stop smiling. At the bottom of the stairs, Maggie was waiting, practically bouncing on her toes. Well. Maggie demanded, don't leave me in suspense. Ethan winked at Sophia, then turned to Maggie, giving her a thumbs up. Maggie threw her hands in the air. Woo, it's about time. She pulled Sophia into a hug. I'm so happy for you. Thanks, Mags. Sophia laughed. I can hardly believe it myself. Maggie clapped her hands together. Well, come on, you two. Let's get this party started. Arm in arm, Sophia and Ethan followed Maggie into the crowded room. Maggie hurried over to the band, whispering something to the guitarist. He nodded and handed her a microphone. Excuse me, everyone. Maggie's voice boomed through the speakers. I have a very special announcement to make. The chatter died down as all eyes turned to Maggie. Sophia felt her cheeks flush, suddenly shy at being the center of attention. As you all know, this party was originally intended to be a grand reopening to celebrate the hard work of our very own Sophia Matthews and the amazing Java Joy. Maggie gestured to Sophia, who gave a small wave. But I have it on good authority that this party has now turned into something more. An engagement party. Gasps and cheers erupted from the crowd. Sophia grinned as Ethan slipped an arm around her waist. That's right, folks. After many years apart, Sophia and her high school sweetheart Ethan are finally making it official, Maggie continued. More cheers and applause. Sophia was enveloped in hugs and well wishes from her friends and neighbors, people pulling her and Ethan in opposite directions to shower them in kind words. Congratulations. We're so happy for you. It's about time. Sophia's heart swelled with joy. She caught Ethan's eye from across the room and they exchanged giddy smiles. 
She made her way back through the crowd to Ethan, who immediately pulled her into an embrace. Can you believe this is really happening? Ethan murmured, his face nuzzling into her hair. Sophia sighed contentedly. It feels like a dream, but the best kind of dream. She gazed up at him, thinking how handsome he looked with his warm brown eyes and lopsided grin. The same grin that had made her weak in the knees back in high school. Some things never changed. I love you, Ethan said softly. I've never stopped loving you. I love you too, Sophia whispered, with all my heart. Their lips met in a tender kiss, a promise of the life they would share. Sophia's heart was so full, she thought it might burst. The sound of someone loudly clearing their throat interrupted their moment. Maggie stood there, hands on hips, eyebrow raised in mock sternness. All right, you two, save it for the honeymoon. She held out her hand. Now let me see that ring. Sophia laughed and offered her left hand. Maggie and several other women oohed and awed over the simple yet elegant setting Ethan had chosen. Have you set a date yet? asked Lily's friend Nina. We haven't gotten that far, Ethan chuckled. Well, if you need any help planning, count me in, Nina said. I love weddings. As more people came by to offer their congratulations and advice, Sophia was grateful for this moment. Surrounded by so much love and support, she knew that she had finally found her way home. Sophia's parents made their way through the crowd, beaming with joy. Oh, honey, we're so happy for you, Helen said, embracing her daughter. You've chosen a fine young man, John added, shaking Ethan's hand firmly. Welcome to the family, son. Ethan's own parents, Charles and Evelyn, were not far behind. Evelyn immediately pulled Sophia into a warm hug. I've always thought of you as a daughter, she said. Now it will be official. Charles clapped Ethan on the back. You've got yourself a gem there. Don't ever let her go. I won't, Dad. I promise, Ethan replied. Sophia looked around at their parents, her heart swelling. She had always dreamed of finding this kind of love, a marriage where both sides of the family embraced each other with open arms. Now here they all were, celebrating together. The scent of freshly baked goodies wafted through the air. Sophia spotted a long table laden with cookies, cupcakes, and other treats courtesy of the local bakery. Another table held carafes of coffee, an assortment of teas, and glasses of lemonade. Simple yet elegant decorations adorned each table, along with vases bursting with wildflowers picked from the meadow just outside of town. And in the center of the dessert table sat a dazzling two-tier cake. The frosting was pale gold, and edible glitter had been artfully placed to form the words, Congratulations, Sophia and Ethan. She nudged Ethan gently and nodded to the cake. How many people were in on this? He winked. Everyone. And what if I had said no? She asked, trying to hide her smile. There's a backup cake that says, better luck next time, Ethan. She had to laugh at that. The first of a lifetime of laughs to come with this man she would soon get to call her husband. Sophia's musings were interrupted by the upbeat tempo of a new song starting up. The band tucked away in the corner of the venue began playing something lively and familiar. Couples drifted towards the makeshift dance floor, swaying and spinning to the music. Sophia spotted her parents among them, smiling and laughing as they two stepped in sync. Nearby, Ethan's parents were attempting the same, though his father kept fumbling the steps, but the joy on their faces shone through any missteps. Shall we? Ethan asked, offering his hand. Sophia grinned and let him lead her out. Soon they were gliding across the floor, caught up in their own world. Around them, she caught snippets of conversation between the other guests. Oh, young love, sighed an elderly woman to her husband. Remember when we were like that? The man chuckled. I don't think I ever stopped looking at you like that. At another table, a group of women chatted excitedly. Did you see the ring? asked one. It's gorgeous. I still have my grandmother's ring, said another woman. It meant so much to be proposed to with a family heirloom, but to have a ring custom designed. She swooned. 
Sophia rested her head on Ethan's shoulder, letting the sounds of celebration wash over her. She had found her place here, with these people, with this man. And she knew in that moment that she was home. As the song ended, Ethan gently guided Sophia off the dance floor toward the front of the room. He tapped a fork against his champagne flute to get everyone's attention. Thank you all for being here to celebrate with us tonight, he began, his arm wrapped around Sophia's waist. We're so lucky to have the love and support of this amazing community. Sophia nodded, tears springing to her eyes. I can't tell you how much it means to be welcomed with such open arms. When I first came back to Pine Haven, I never imagined I'd fall back into place so easily. But I guess some things are just meant to be. She turned to Ethan, love shining in her eyes. I'm so excited to start our life together. Ethan smiled and kissed her tenderly. You're the best thing that's ever happened to me, he said. I'll spend every day trying to make you as happy as you've made me. Around them, their friends and family raised their glasses in a toast. Sophia knew that no matter what the future held, they would face it together, anchored by the love surrounding them now. Epilogue The scent of pumpkin spice and roasted coffee beans enveloped Lily as she stepped into the cozy coffee shop. Sophia! she called out, spotting her sister behind the counter. Sophia's face lit up when she saw Lily. Hey sis, your usual? Without waiting for an answer, Sophia grabbed two mugs and started steaming milk for their drinks. Lily leaned against the counter, breathing in the comforting smells. Mmm, is that mom's pumpkin bread I spy? You know it, Sophia said with a grin. She sliced two generous pieces and artfully arranged them on plates along with the finished drinks. Let's grab a seat. They settled into a tucked away booth in the back the one they always chose for their sister chats. Lily took a sip of her pumpkin spice latte and sighed contentedly. So, tell me all about the new apartment. Have you and Ethan made out in every room yet? She added with a playful wink. Sophia blushed, her green eyes shining. It's perfect. Ethan's planning to officially move in as soon as we're married. She dropped her voice to an excited whisper. And guess what? He wants to get a dog. That's awesome. I can totally see you as a dog person. Lily was thrilled to see her sister so happy, especially after her painful breakup last year. I just feel so lucky, you know, Sophia mused, nibbling her bread. Ethan is everything I've ever wanted. I can't wait to finally start our life together. So, let's talk wedding details, Lily said eagerly, leaning forward. Have you decided on colors yet? Sophia nodded, her eyes lighting up. We're going with a navy blue and silver color scheme. Ethan looks so handsome in navy, and I just love the look of silver accents. Ooh, that will be gorgeous, Lily gushed. And have you started thinking about flowers? Lots of white roses and baby's breath, Sophia said dreamily. I want it to look romantic and timeless. Oh, and Ethan suggested having sunflowers in the bouquets as a nod to my sunny personality. She laughed. Lily clapped her hands together. Sunflowers at a winter wedding. You would be the first. She grinned, loving that Sophia didn't care about outward appearances, so much as making real, meaningful memories. Ethan was perfect for her. The sisters spent the next few minutes chatting about the guest list and other wedding details. Lily was relieved to hear that Sophia wasn't including her backstabbing former friend Jessica, and she wholeheartedly approved of the vintage jazz band Sophia had booked. The venue we picked is just perfect, Sophia gushed. It's that beautiful banquet hall on the edge of town, with the big windows overlooking the mountains. I know the view will be stunning, especially with the snow blanketing the mountains. She went on to describe the vintage-inspired decor she was planning. Mason jars with twinkly lights, rustic wood accents, and antique-looking frames for the table numbers. Ooh, and the cake, Sophia exclaimed. It's going to be amazing. Four tiers with cascading flowers and these adorable figurines of me and Ethan on top. I can't wait to see it in person. Lily grinned, loving her sister's infectious enthusiasm. She could tell Sophia had thought through every detail to make sure the wedding reflected her personality and style. 
What about the music? Lily asked. Have you and Ethan picked your first dance song yet? We have, Sophia replied. We're going with At Last by Etta James. It just feels so romantic and timeless. And the band we hired does an incredible jazz repertoire, so I know the music will be fantastic all night long. Lily smiled as she listened to her sister gush over the wedding plans, clearly in her element organizing every detail. It all sounds so beautiful. I can tell how much thought you've put into this. Sophia nodded, taking a sip of her coffee. I want it to be perfect. Lily's eyes drifted down to the table, noticing a folder stuffed with pages of inspiration photos and fabric swatches. Ooh, what's this? Lily asked, pulling the folder closer. Sophia's name was printed on the tab in neat handwriting. Just some design ideas I've been playing around with, Sophia said, leaning over to flip through the pages with Lily. For the wedding? No, actually, interior design. After sorting through all the legal mumbo-jumbo that popped up after Mayor Caldwell's office was cleaned out, we discovered that the Carter family actually owns most of the buildings on this block. They're going to let all of the shop owners keep what's in use, of course, but they want me to help restore some of these empty storefronts and vacant spaces, starting with that one across the street. Lily's eyes widened as Sophia pointed out the window to a faded brick storefront with a for lease sign in the window. Really? That's so exciting. Lily said. Sophia nodded, her green eyes lighting up. I know, I can't wait. This whole area used to be so lively years ago. It would be amazing to help bring some of that charm back. Lily grinned, picturing the possibilities. She could imagine the block transformed with lights strung between the buildings, flower boxes in the windows, and couples strolling hand in hand. Well, if anyone can make it happen, it's you, Lily said. Sophia smiled, clearly invigorated by the project ahead. Lily felt a rush of pride for her talented sister, already leaving her mark on their little town. Maybe with all these new spaces opening up, we'll get some new residents too, Lily mused. She traced her finger around the rim of her coffee cup, suddenly feeling wistful. Sophia was moving forward with her life. New apartment, new fiancé, new career opportunities. And here Lily was still living at home and working the front desk at their local clinic. Not that she didn't love her job, but lately she'd felt like something was missing. Who knows, maybe your Prince Charming will be one of the new tenants, Sophia said with a playful nudge. Lily rolled her eyes but felt her cheeks flush. Oh, stop. I know you and Mom have been conspiring to set me up again. We just want you to be happy, Sophia insisted. You know, I have a good feeling about this year. I think everything is going to change for the better around here, for both of us. Lily smiled softly, feeling a swell of gratitude for her sister's encouragement. You're right, she said, straightening up. I should keep an open mind. Anything is possible. Sophia grinned and lifted her coffee mug. Two new beginnings. Lily clinked her mug against Sophia's. Two new beginnings, she echoed, feeling a spark of hope. Maybe her Prince Charming really was right around the corner. This has been Coming Home to Pine Haven, written by Laura Abbott. Copyright, Laura Abbott.